This work session regular meeting of the Township Council is court to order. Madam Master Clerk. Oh, Madam Clerk. <laughs> Madam Assistant Clerk. Sheba. In accordance with the Open Public Meeting Act of the State of New Jersey, adequate notice of the April 9, 2019 work session regular meeting of the Franklin Township Council was provided as required by law. Uh, if we could all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, uh, followed by the invocation, remain standing for the invocation by Councilman Ted Chase. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. Remain standing, please. May those assembled here today enjoy the many offerings of our township. May we abide by the rules we have established, those of trust, fellowship, and ethics, and may we place service above self in our daily endeavors, and may we always test ourselves and our efforts to be sure they are the truth, good for all concerned, benefit to mankind, and provide peace and understanding. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Councilman Chase? Here. Councilwoman Francois? Here. Councilman Galtieri? Here. Mayor Kramer? Here. Councilman Odinjaka? Yeah. Councilman Passat? Here. Councilwoman Pewitt? Here. Deputy Mayor Vesanella? Here. And Councilman Wright? Um, we are now on to accommodations and proclamations, and I heard there was something somewhere about some basketball team. I'm not quite sure what that's about, uh, but uh, Councilman Wright, uh, maybe you can start with the festivities, and any council member who wants to, I just learned a new term, Bogart in, yes. is more than welcome to do so. I will be doing so. Come on down, anyone who wishes. Uh, let's go. Oh, sure. I'm here because I was the center of our basketball team. <laughs> Gotta love them. Okay, here we go. Tournament of Champion Winners, Franklin Township Ladies Basketball Team. <laughs> and I would like to say I was the center. Thank you. Um, the ladies put on a good run. I think they were 34 now. Undefeated. Now, the last time this happened was, Never. no, 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 no. Malcolm X. Shabazz, ladies basketball, put on the run. Champions also. But see, there was a, what, what kind of gap? 10-year, 12-year, 15-year gap between? Yeah, one, one, yeah, one game difference. Many, many. But the years, it was a whole bunch of years. Um, and I want to say that they played basketball, in my opinion, the way you play basketball, teamwork. One individual can play, two might play, but when you have a team sport, everyone gets to play. Now, forget that they play basketball. It's all about education. Education comes first. If you're not on the school yard, the school, if you, if, you, if you don't pass math, if you don't pass English, French, Spanish, whatever you take, if you don't pass those classes, what kind of star are you? Where are you going to go? So they have to pass the classes first, and that's what I look for. 
first, academics. Second, tournament of champion winners. Now, I have a proclamation that I'm going to read, and it's going to pretty much just drop down a little bit on who they are and what they are. Commendation. Whereas the Franklin High School girls varsity basketball team, under the head coach of Audrey Taylor, assistant coaches Alicia Kavanaugh and Doris Miller Edwards, and managers Leslie Salas and Serena Jackson, is to be recognized and honored for their outstanding 2018 2019 season with the following accomplishments 34 and 0. The 2019 NJSIA Tournament of Champions, second in three years. The 2019 NJSAA Group 4 State Champions, third year in a row. The 2019 NJSIAA North 2 Group 4 State Champions, third year in a row. The 2019 Skyland Conference Champions, Delaware Division. The 2019 Somerset County Champion, two years in a row. Number one ranked team in New Jersey. Now, on this one, they did by stand up. Ranked number 12 team in the country, USA Today. Whereas the 2018-2019 Lady Warriors consist of, come here coach, I'll run this off right quick. Run off all the names for me. Mm-mm. Diamond Miller, Luis Yupa, Tiana Jackson, Arceta Yupa, Kiana Skank, Kennedy Skank, Erica Jackson, Morgan Jones, Talise Wins, Kyra Dempsey Tony, Christina Majit, uh, Jacqueline Drake Firth. Now, therefore, we, all right, Councilman Philip Kramer Mary, Mayor, under the 2018 2019 Franklin High School girls uh, basketball team and their coaching staff for their outstanding achievements and command, and commend them for their display and sportsmanship and leadership. Ladies and gentlemen, Tournament of Champion winners. One more time, one more time. Now, we have the mayor who would like to say something. Uh, do we have anybody? We have the Board of Education. Board of Education? Oh, come on down. Come on down. We have the mayor. Come on up. AD. Uh, coach. And the Board of Education. That order, go for it. Thank you, Mr. Wright. Um, of course, I want to. Uh, yeah. okay, I want everything, everyone to know I taught them everything they know. Um, that shot from uh, half court, uh, I taught her that. Um, no, seriously, I, I, you know, you know we, we, we honor them because of their winning the tournament, but really the thing that inspires us is their determination, their teamwork, what, that's what got them here. And they're just amazing girls. And uh, they really, you know, they put us on the map. They, 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 uh, I cannot tell you how proud I am of them, how proud of all of Franklin is of you. You guys are amazing. Thank you. Um, I just want to uh, publicly thank the town council and the community for embracing our coaching staff and our, our young ladies. Um, I'm privileged to see them every day and see the hard work that they put into it. 
And um, I have to tell you, it's been an amazing journey. Um, one accolade that uh, Councilman Wright left out was that Coach Taylor was just named USA Today's Coach of the Year. And uh, as I said, we really appreciate the, the town's support and, uh, and, and thank you so much. I just want to congratulate the team and the coach. And um, I know our BOE president, Nancy LaCourte, was at every game and she updated the rest of the board members who could not make it. And I want to thank the town council as well for recognizing our students. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you for having us and, and honoring us. We always appreciate that. Um, for me, um, I'm just proud. Uh, I get to see these girls every day and practice. Um, actually, I miss them very much right now because I don't get to see them every day. But um, the joy of seeing them every day, um, getting to learn them as individuals as well as players, um, that's the joy of the, of the coaching side of it. Um, the wins obviously feel good, and being 34-0 and 0 obviously feels good as well. Um, but it's getting to know the girls and seeing their growth and, and seeing how hard they work um, to get to where they are today. And everything that they put in, um, not only in the classroom, but also uh, with practices and games and all of that, um, I don't think a lot of people understand how long this season is and how many hours they have to put in. So really all of the applause and, and everything goes towards them and their effort. And they trusted me, so I'm thankful that they trusted me and we were able to do what we did this year. And I'm glad the community is proud and I'm glad we were able to bring something home to Franklin. Thank you. Okay, ladies. Oh, go, go for it. <laughs> okay. Um, again, everyone's pretty much said the same thing. We really just would like to thank our community. All our support, all of you guys' support. Can't do it without the fans and the support of our the support of our community. So we really do thank you guys so much. Um, the love and the feedback that we're getting from doing like the recognition alone from doing what we did is really amazing. Couldn't ask for a better support system, a better town. Glad <laughs> I'm glad I'm from Franklin. So I know they are too. So really, that's it. Thank you so much for everything. Now, now here comes the. Photo op, okay? So everyone that wants to take a photo, you got to get up, stand around, because we're gonna get that photo shot, okay? Now, 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 ladies, I'm in front, okay? Don't, 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 don't get that mixed up. I'm in front. So, let me move this out the way. I'm up front, you know, I want to make sure that everybody sees me. No, come on. <laughs> the most important thing is to get Kiana's socks. They actually match. Uh, for those of you who watch her play, you know, yes. They actually match. If you watch her, if you watch her play, I think she dazzles the opponents with unmatching socks.
we get the HRC up here. Since it's your proclamation. Oh, yeah, please. So let me read it and then have our HRC president say something. Okay. Uh, so it's a commendation. Whereas Shirin Pushti's dedicated service to this community deserves special recognition, having served on the Human Relations Commissions since January 24th, 2012. And whereas Shirin is an excellent role model for young people to follow, not only through her participation in many civic projects, but also through her commitment to community service, and whereas the citizens of our community are proud of how volunteering has and is central to Shirin's life, staring with, starting with her uh, involvement in high school and with the Franklin Township Youth Council, F Franklin High School Student Government, and New Jersey Orators. And whereas Sheeran helped develop and mentor the Franklin Youth Empowerment Group, inspired by the Baha'i teachings, is focused on creating an environment of mutual support that engages youths of all backgrounds to raise their spiritual and intellectual capacities through community service. And whereas, while at Robert Wood Johnson Medical School, Sharon earned a distinction in medical innovation and entrepreneurship by co-founding Suretyfy and earned a distinction in leadership in academic healthcare through co-founding the local interdisciplinary care collaborative. Now, therefore, we, Rajiv Prasad Councilman and Philip Kramer, Mayor of the Township of Franklin, County of Somerset, State of New Jersey, on behalf of the Township Council and the citizens of the Township of Franklin, extend their heartfelt appreciation and sincere thanks to Sharon Pushti for her valuable service and dedication to the citizens in our community. Congratulate her on her graduation from Robert Wood Johnson Medical School at Rutgers University and wish her luck with her residency at the University of California in Los Angeles. Gary, say a few words. Now the pre uh, chairman of, uh, president of our Human Relations Commission. Um. Not only is, is the HRC uh, proud to be here this evening because of the basketball team, but here we have an a example of an of an individual that has gone through the entire uh, uh, Franklin Township school system, and uh, I can tell you when uh, uh, she earned a, a scholarship from the uh, Martin Luther. King Foundation uh, a long time ago, I knew that uh, Shireen would be going uh, to uh, at the high standards. Uh, she not only became a pharmacist, but uh, that wasn't good enough. Uh, she wanted to go back to the medical school, and in a couple of weeks, we can call her Dr. Pastucci. Pastucci. So, we are all are very proud of uh, Shireen. <laughs> Not only will the HRC miss her, but I can tell you that uh, she 
uh, makes a Franklin Township uh, a township which we all are honored to be part of. Thank you. So I'm very honored to be here uh, to commemorate her. Um, she really is a truly amazing person who, who I, I do know personally. We met when you were a, uh, the student representative on the Advisory Board of Health, and uh, you instantly you know, saw the maturity uh, in her, the wisdom in her. Um, you know, we, we, just, we just had a great basketball team up here. We now have a great woman up here. She is going to go incredibly far. I, I can't tell you how impressed I am by her, how much in awe I am of her. She will, she, her parents must be just beaming every day uh, about her. Um, she um, will make uh, all of us very proud. Uh, she's going far away, but I, I'm, I'm trusting she will come back. Um, at, but she will give to whatever community um, she uh winds up in and I always I have this little expression to myself I'm always nice to people like her because someday I could be wind up working for her <laughs> hi everyone um, I just wanted to express my thanks to the Township Council to the Human Relations Commission um, to a lot of people in Franklin Township who have molded me into the person that I am today um, having grown up with a really strong set of values from my family as well as from Baha'i faith, um, I've always wanted to contribute and to serve. And along the way, I've always found encouragement and accompaniment from many people who are in this room and beyond. And again, I'm just very excited um, and honored, honestly, to be from Franklin Township, to have gone through the Franklin Township Public School System. As you can see, there's a lot of great potential and great people coming from Franklin Township. And you know, our diversity is our strength. And I'm excited to take this commitment that has been molded into me um, on to Los Angeles, but hopefully one day come back. I'll be going into internal medicine residency with a focus on primary care and health services research. Thank you. <laughs> No, we got to recognize Ron and Mrs. Pushti for the great job they did, and of course, the elder sister is a role model for for Sharon. Uh, she's a doctor in her own right, so uh, eye surgeon. Yeah, so uh, we great family, and we are delighted that you're here, adding to uh, the richness of Franklin. So thank you very much. So, so the theme for tonight is, if you think Franklin schools aren't any good, take that. Um, so, um, oh, <laughs> Artiman, if you could come up. Artiman has asked uh, for a proclamation celebrating. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make pronounce several things wrong here. Please forgive me. Basak, ba Basaki. Basaki. Um, so, whereas Sikhism is a religion founded in the Punjab region of South Asia over five centuries ago and introduced to the United States in the 19th century, and whereas Sikhism is the fifth largest world religion with approximately 25 million adherents from diverse backgrounds throughout the world, including half a million adherents in the United States, and whereas Sikhs are the United States, in the United States, pursue diverse uh, professions and walks of life, making rich contributions to the economic uh, vibrancy of the um, United States as farmers, engineers, doctors, scientists, vice presidents of boards of education, business owners, and more. And whereas six Americans continue to make strides throughout securing uh, religion, liberties as patriotic members of the United S States Armed Forces, and whereas Vashaki is one of the most religiously significant days in the Sikh history, uh, commemorating the creation of Kalasha, Kalasa, 
uh, a fellowship of devote Sikhs uh, by Guru Gobind uh, Sahib Singh, Singh, Hardiman Singh, uh, in 1699, and whereas the Sikh religion is based uh, on a belief in one God and the uh, equality of all human beings, and whereas the celebration of Vishaki includes performing Siva, selfish service, selfless service, such as providing free meals to all visitors to the to Sikh Garwaras, houses of worship. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed, I, Phil Kramer, Mayor of the Township of Franklin, County of Somerset, State of New Jersey, on behalf of the Township Council, wish the Sikh American community a joyous Visaki. Thank you. Vesaki is the most significant of the annual Sikh gatherings. Historically, this occasion, marking the spring harvest in Punjab, was celebrated with an immense festival. In the year 1699, Vesaki came to serve a particularly Sikh purpose when Guru Gobind Singh gathered the Sikh community and form formalized the Guru Khalsa Panth. Every year in April, Sikhs gather in their local communities on Vesaki to remember history, celebrate collectively, and recommit to their religious tradition. At this time, I would like to thank and recommit my support to Franklin Township on behalf of the Sikh families who have made Franklin our home. Mayor Kramer, Deputy Mayor Vasanala, the Council at Large members, and Dr. Alex Karazi, the President of the Franklin Interfaith Council. I would like to extend my invitation to you and your families to come visit a Gurdwara to learn more about Sikhs, our beliefs, and our services. We have a Gurdwara in Bridgewater, Somerset County, and if you reach out to me, I will be happy to schedule a visit and tour at a time convenient to you individually or as a group. Thank you for this proclamation today. Good evening. Uh, first of all, congratulations. Thank you, Mayor, again for uh, the proclamation. Uh, my name is Alex Karazi. I'm the president of Interface Council in Franklin Township. And uh, often I have, you've heard me saying that we have over 70 houses of worship. And one of the missions that we have is uh, to invite our neighbors to place some more understanding and less fear. And people usually are afraid of what they do not understand, especially when it comes to other faiths and culture. So if we understand each other, we won't be fearing each other, but we'll be loving each other. And um, believe it or not, we have so many values that are common to all of us, regardless of our faith. And I just wanted to mention the three principles of Sikhism so you can see how close it is to your own faith. The first one is keeping God in mind at all times. The second one is earning an honest living. And since God is truth, Sikhs seeks to, leave, to live honestly. And the third one is giving to charity and caring for others. And I often have said that we are all children of Adam and created equal in humanity. We just look different, and that's also a gift from our Creator. So I hope all of us will learn from each other. We uh, love each other, we respect each other, and to make Franklin a great, diverse place to live. Thank you very much. And Once again, we are celebrating a religion that is not immediately familiar to me, uh, that I learned from, that adds to the rich, richness of the town. Uh, Artemin herself adds to the, uh, our society by being a member of the Board of Education. So once again, we are, taking, we are saying, if you don't like our schools, take that, you're wrong. Uh, here is an, another person uh, devoted to our community and making our schools uh, all the better. Um, and um, it just, I, I think you have to go a very, very long way to find a place as special as Franklin that has this kind of richness uh, within 47 square miles um, of the town. It, it just, you know, you have to go to the UN.
to find a denser diversity than this. Um, so thank you for bringing this to our attention. Thank you for living in our community and enriching our community. Um, and thank you for promoting uh, religious freedom um, uh, as you do just by practicing what you do every day. Thank you. Okay, the um, next item would be public discussion. Um, Mr. Prasad is asked to make a statement prior to public discussion. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, before you leave, I'd just like to say Satsi Kal, and uh, you know, you're all, we're all brothers, and if you, want to know in Punjab what happens is the eldest brother, uh, eldest son, used to be that they, he became a Sikh. And so we've always had the brotherhood and continue to have so. And uh, my childhood best friend is still, uh, you know, uh, Shubinder Singh but is, is, is uh, somebody very near and dear to me. And uh, so, uh, all I have to say is that uh, welcome, and you know it's it's something that we will continue to start as a tradition to celebrate Vaisakhi. And Sikhism is really misunderstood, and it needs to be that we need to make the effort to understand the the peaceful nature of the Sikh people and the contribution that they make, and. A lot of us were at the Gurdwara when the massacre happened in uh, Oak Creek, Wisconsin, and that should never be forgotten. And so wrongly uh, misunderstood, it is a, a big contributor, uh, Sikhism, to our, our richness here. And, uh, you know, we're there for you in whatever way we can be. So this is more brotherhood than anything else, and I appreciate it. So thank you and happy Vaisakhi to you. And Artiman has to run because she is involved with BOE negotiations. So she's multitasking tonight. Okay. Now, I'd like the opportunity to read a statement. And I thank the mayor for the opportunity to do so. After deep consideration during the last 10 days, I would like to take this opportunity to inform the citizens of Franklin Township that I have notified the township clerk that I'm withdrawing my petition and ending my candid candidacy for mayor of Franklin Township. This is not a decision I make easily. After 13 years of serving the residents of our community as an at-large councilman, I know firsthand the difference you can make as a public official, be it through the direct work of the mayor and council, participation in the various council committees, the interaction with so many of the wonderfully diverse communities of residents within the township, or even just the one-on-one -on -one interaction that comes with so many of our residents working together, listening, exchanging ideas, all for the greater purpose of making Franklin Township a better place to call home. It is because of this that I have come to the conclusion that to run a primary campaign would take the risk of opening up divisions within our community that have the potential to undermine the progress which we have all in our own ways worked so hard to achieve. This does not mean that vigorous debate is not healthy and should not, and should not continue to occur within the Franklin community. However, the potential for divisiveness that so often occurs 
particularly within the context of a local primary contest, is something that I do not think would be good for our community at this time. Rather, I would prefer to focus on the specific issues and the concerns that make, that can help to strengthen our community. This, I believe, would be a better and more productive use of the time remaining in my term of office. Be assured, whether I'm in office or not in office, I intend to continue to be an active participant in the life of our community. Continue to raise my voice on the issues which I see as significantly affecting the lives of our residents and continue to put forward my ideas as to how we can move forward with what I know is the common goal of each and every person in this room and throughout Franklin Township. The goal of making our township the strongest, most unified, most forward-thinking community anywhere in the state of New Jersey. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Um, so moved. Second. Aye. 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 Sorry. Um, motion is carried. We are now open for public discussion. Anyone wishing to speak um, has uh, can, may come up for five minutes. State your name and address. You may only come up once. No yielding of time. Uh, please address the council. Um, and um, there is later in the um, in the uh, agenda a public hearing, particularly on ordinance that changes the zoning map. So if people are here to speak on, for that, you, you can speak during the, this portion of the public session, but there is a, uh, and you are free to speak on anything pertaining to government during this portion of the public session, but there is a particular part of the agenda for that. Um, just please be advised. So anyone wishing to speak, please come to the mic. No. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name's James Johnson, lifelong addressee, Franklin slash Somerset 08873 zip code. Been here since 1970. Graduate from Franklin High, 1984. I'm up here right now. I'm sorry, your address? Do you want the block number or lot number or address? Your 16 ad Renfro. Okay, thank you. Right. Right off JFK Boulevard. Great. I'm, I'm, I'm up here just to find out about this ordinance because I got it in the mail. And there's three figures here, but there's no street addresses. And I just want to know how it's going to affect my property. Um, your candidate if you can Mr. tell Feely. me where this is being created or. So I, created. I don't know what you're speaking about. I'm assuming that it's the ordinance that's on the agenda tonight. Yes, sir. So the planner is here to discuss it. And that and I think that's what the mayor was alluding to, that that ordinance has its own public discussion portion. Yeah, but where, you told me I can walk No, you absolutely right can. Right. But I think that the planner is here to do a presentation on that prior to the public so portion. Directly answer that it's the end of. I, I don't I don't know. It's it's it. I don't know specifically specifically what your question is in reference to that particular ordinance. We can sit here and have that discussion. But you can tell them where that ordinance applies to. What well, that ordinance applies to numerous locations throughout the township. I, right, and that's right. why I said there's a, and it's, it's on Weston Road, it's on 
Gates Road. It's on a number of locations well, that's what throughout I'm asking, the town. Sir, if you can give me the addresses. Well, I don't I'm have. Saying, the, so I'm saying the fig. Well, you're, you're trying to answer it for me, and I'm saying the figures that I got in the mail does not show the street addresses or anything. It just has. Blocks the block and, and lots. Block That's correct. So I'm just asking. Where's and that so at? I'm saying that there's a presentation. There's block and lots okay. all over the township okay. that are affected so by this then. ordinance. And, and for me to sit here and go on the map and look up the addresses right now would take more than your five minutes when the planner is here with a full presentation to discuss specifically what you're asking for. So, so, sir, if you wait till after the presentation, you can still come up and ask questions. Yeah, yeah I mean, you have. There's a public okay. discussion okay. at that time as well. Right. Well, I'll give. I'll give somebody else a chance, and I'll sit down and wait. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Anyone else wishing to speak? <clears throat> yeah, my name is Greg Richardson. I live at 327 Gerard Avenue, Somerset. And, sir, before you start, thank you for your service. I oh, see thank you, you being on that. Um, you guys came down with um, sidewalk last year on Gerard Avenue, Hillcrest, and Belmore. And the company that did the, the work, when they tore up our yards, uh, they were supposed to put topsoil down and seed, right? And what they did was they threw some sand down with stone in it, and they threw seed on top of that, and, ex and it, they expect that to grow. And my, my thing is that if we had topsoil down there and we had grass before you, tore up our, before you guys tore up our lawns, we should have topsoil down and seed and make it grass again instead of you walk outside your house and it's sand and stone. And whoever did the job, they should have done it right. And that's why I come down here to address. I came down here the other day thinking that the mayor had a full-time position, but I, I was told that he was um, a part-time position because I wanted to talk to him about that. And everybody on Gerard Avenue and, and Hillcrest, I don't know why they're not down here, they've been complaining about it. So I, I want to know, what are you guys going to do about that contractor that was supposed to have put the uh, topsoil down and seed it, and because now the grass is partially, partially grown? No, Mr. Mr. Mayor, Mayor if I, uh, Mr. Richardson, I believe you and I had a, a conversation, a pretty lengthy one, on the telephone about specifically what was being done, correct? Right. All right, so you contacted my uh, you contacted my office, exactly. and I told you that I reached out to the, the engineering firm that was overseeing that job for us, okay. and that there's a punch list, and they have not received final payment. And among the items on the punch list is the topsoiling and seeding of the area between the sidewalk and the curb on your particular street. And I told you that that work couldn't be done until the winter was over and the, win and the weather broke, which is exactly what I told you last week and what I'm telling you now. The company is still going to come out and complete the job. They couldn't complete the job until the weather was conducive to grow seed. Yeah, I understand. I talked to you, but I still okay. want to come down here and get it on record. Well, I, I, know I, and I understand. Right. I'm just telling you that, that right. the answer is still the same it's as it was last week. It's just not between a curb and a sidewalk. It's on people's property. Too. Wherever there needs to be restoration to replant the grass, they're required to do that by the contract, and the contract will be enforced by the township, and it's now the time where we can topsoil and seed. No, I thought maybe it was going to come back in the summertime or something. Well, I, just like I told you last week, they're over. going to be back in the spring. They're planning on coming out within the next two weeks, from what I was told by the engineering firm overseeing the job. All right. And so sir, I'm be looking for it. There's my phone number. Well, I got your phone number. I just okay. didn't call it. I was just going to come down and talk to you about it, you know, because so, I just think So that for people who don't know, I have a regular job. I'm not here every day. Most of the work that all of council does is at night. But you're welcome to call that number. We could set up a time to meet, or we could talk over the phone if it's not handled properly. Well, he said it's going to be handled properly. I and talked to him. He said it's going to be handled properly. But I wanted to come down here and get on record that I came down here because um, I was concerned about, you know, the job being half done. Mission accomplished. All right. Very okay. good. Anyone else wishing to speak? Bill Connell, 25 Spring Street. This is not going to be as much fun as because Carl Wright is out in the hallway. Um, but uh, as a uh, member of the Fourth Ward Committee, I feel like I left Carl unattended after the last council meeting uh, and his discussion in the uh, with Hamilton Street. And I guess my question to him was, um, 
it's almost like there's pl plans in place and, hello, Carl. Um, there are plans in place and if you listen to people talk, it's, okay, if something happens, there's a mechanism to adjust to it. Okay, so if, if a building gets built, there's a mechanism to, to adjust the parking. Um, and I almost got the sense that uh, Councilman Wright was advocating to do something immediately. Okay, um, like maybe adjust the parking now so that it's, the area is prepared for any additional density. And I was trying to ask you to shortly clarify what you really wanted done in the short term. Hello, sir. Okay, that's it, thank you. Thank you, anyone else wishing to speak? Uh, Benjamin Guy, 35 Pat Drive. Um, just wanted to uh, notify the council because I just came from the freeholders meeting. So the freeholders, uh, specifically Mr. Lane um, from the planning board uh, uh, for Somerset County, they're actually gonna be doing a uh, study on the census um, and trying to get the local committees of uh, the different towns towns to give them data on what exactly improvements they want to do on, in the town. So they're they're supposed to be putting that committee together in the next, um, probably in the next month or so. So you should be on the lookout for, um, look out for some notifications from, from them to actually contribute to that. So I'm just giving a uh, heads up to the to I, town's I, council I don't about understand. that. So, census so, so what's happening is that the census starts next, next year, right? Sure. So the county starts allocating money um, going into next year about what they're going to actually put, uh, put, uh, uh, supply money for and what they need to approve over for the next 10 years. In order to help the census along. Yeah. I no. got it. Good. Thank so. I, I don't think that's what he's saying, Mayor. No. He's talking about capital improvements for Cap the next 10 years. Walter Lane is the t county planner. Yes. Oh, okay. So they, so things that we were talking about with roadways, transportation, and everything else that is coming up during this time frame, and we're actually doing our master plan as far as what we're doing as far as the town is concerned, these are the times to actually ask about those specific things to actually be done. I know one of the things that we always talk about with is transportation in this town. They had, we should put up to the town count, county at this specific time frame to ask about transportation issues and reevaluating the transportation issues that we actually have in the town. At this specific time frame with us dealing with congestion and improvements in certain areas as far as uh, more production, as far as housing and everything else, we should be asking about roadway improvements at this specific time frame. So these are things that we should actually be doing to actually uh, get ahead of the get ahead of the curve because we're you know we're dealing with one county that we don't have restrictions on, which is Middlesex County, which we have to deal with New Brunswick on our border lines. So if we need certain things that we're actually doing, we need to be asking that at this specific time frame. So if there's a plan, as we stated before, with the YMCA that is supposed to be trying to be talked about in the area and we have a problem, we need to be asking about it at this specific time frame. So I'm just making an advisement to people to say, hey look, at this specific time frame, Walter Lane, I just talked to him about 10 minutes ago, he's gonna be looking for outreach on specific things that we wanna do, all right? Second thing is, the actual, what we have actually done over the last 10 years as far as improvements in our area, I wanna know from what we, did, what, we, what we still have not completed as far as projects in our pipeline that we made up from our last master plan. So if there's a way that we can actually get that done and actually put that information out to the public for either public assistance or anybody else that might want to improve on those areas that we still need help with because of limitations with budgets, I would like to ask for that actually to be put out there openly in the public as we're putting out the master plan. Because again, if we're limited on funding as far as the town is concerned, which we always say that we're growing rapidly and we don't know we don't have enough money to fund everything maybe the public can actually assist certain programs that actually are not here so example is transportation problem that we have there might be a public advocate or somebody else in the room that wants to take on that responsibility to do but again if we're not asking the county to support it and we're going to eat the burden of it and we keep growing what are we actually looking at as a whole as a holistic portion to actually put out to the public as a public portion to offs offset that cost so those are just uh, those are just basic things that I want to actually put out there to you to you guys and then potentially I guess we're supposed to be proven and this goes directly to Mr. Vaughn Locker is that um, the the community block grants stuff is going to be approved and the budget is going to be approved in next month is it does that happen so community block grants have nothing to do with the budget but the budget will be should should be up for a vote at the um, 
next meeting. Next meeting. 20, the 27th, is it? Um, what's 23rd, today? I think. 23rd. 23rd. I'm 23rd. sorry, 23rd. Yeah. You're right. At the council meeting at the 23rd is the council, is the township budget is, is up for adoption okay. on the 23rd. The reason, the my last point is the reason why I'm asking specifically about the community block grants is because, as I stated at the community block uh, hearing, public hearing, is that if we can't fund something and we still want to do it, uh, Leon Levy was here from the YMCA, wants to, she wants to help with a pool program. If we can't do it, the county said they're willing to do it. Ms. Robinson and other people, uh, Sarah's out there, that are actually willing to advocate for certain things that we want to do in our town. So again, if we have a list of things, things that we cannot fund at this specific time frame that are outside of Franklin Township and we want to support, I am asking that the town council send those specific block grants up to the county office and ask for the money. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? I see no one else come forward. A motion to close the public portion of the meeting. Seconded. Moved and seconded. Uh, all in favor of closing public discussion say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> motion is carried. Public discussion is closed. Um, uh, council comment committees, et cetera. Um, why don't we start, well, Mr. We'll start with Mr. Wright and he's gone so he loses his chance. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Chase. <clears throat> now the Public Works Committee met this afternoon just before council meeting. We have pretty much settled on what roads to repave uh, on, out of this year's budget. Uh, some things we approved last year are still to be done, but the contracts are about either let or about to be let to uh, finish up the roads we approved last year. Uh, we can't start on this year's until we've passed our municipal budget, which as you heard will be at the next uh, council meeting, we'll pass it. Uh, I think probably the most prominent, uh, well, probably the most expensive, no, most expensive road we're doing is Cottontail Road, but we've got a grant from the state for a lot of the expense of that, and also a grant to repave Belmont Road, but one that will be entirely from the township is Jake's Lane, which of course has, I think, four occupied houses on it, but it's also carries a lot of traffic coming across the township, and it's a, a very old-fashioned road right now. Um, of course, I'll think of something else that I should have said as soon as I say thank you, Mr. Mayor, but um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Prasad. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, admin did not meet this month, and uh, land use, uh, again, there was no meeting last uh, month, and HRC meets later uh, this month, and Community Foundation doesn't have a meeting until later. So no committee reports to to report on, and I think I've said enough already, so thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Prasad. Uh, Councilwoman Kimberly Francois. Okay, I thought you were gonna go back to Carl, Mr. Wright. Okay, <laughs> you missed your turn, sir. Yep, missed your turn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going with that. Let's see what okay. I'm right Yeah, now. okay. <laughs> First of all, I'd like to say congratulations to Sharin Pucci. Um, I had the opportunity to work with her. I'm so proud of her. She's grown up to be such a wonderful young lady. Had an opportunity to work with her with the Franklin Youth Initiative. I'm sad to see her go to uh, LA for her residency, but I'm sure, sure, sure she will be back. Everybody that leaves Franklin, they always come back here. I also wanted to say that our uh, girls varsity basketball team has made us all so proud. They're so dignified. 
They're so distinguished. And I actually had an opportunity to pass out gifts to them with uh, Pastor Soares, uh, the pastor of the First Baptist Church, a couple Sundays ago. We gave them, uh, me with the staff, were able to give them a commendation and gifts. So it was nice to see them here on behalf of the Township Council as well. They've made us all so proud. And also I want to say that I had an opportunity to, um, I'm going to keep talking about the Youth Center until we go out to bid and we, we start putting the shovel in the ground because I'm starting to get uh, bogarted, bogarted by a lot of people about when we're going to start the construction. I went over to the um, Franklin Middle School, the Hamilton Street ca campus, and I had a, it was their career planning day in their um, uh, college, college, whatever they called it, college, their career day in college, it was called, it, it had a title, college, college readiness, whatever. They had a campaign that they had colleges there and they had people there to talk about their careers. So I was there and um, I had a table where I was passing out the uh, brochures for the, for the youth center. It was very interesting to me because the, the setup that they had, you, the, they had a different setup this year. Instead of people going to the classroom talking about their career, they had it in the gymnasium. So the kids came in and they could go to any table that they wanted to go to. I was on the other side of the gymnasium and uh, it was very interesting. They came in and they ran over to the police department, which I thought, wow, that's really nice that our children are that in tune to our police department. They see them as a career opportunity. They feel comfortable going over to talk to them. And so I had to come from behind my table and, and say, C come on over, come on over, come on over. I have something for you. I want to show you the youth center. And so the kids came over. I gave them brochures. They looked at it and they said, hmm, that looks like a school. That was one of the comments. And a, a couple of them said, hmm, what's a youth center? And, uh, and then once I explained what we were trying to do, they said, oh, can we sign up? Can we sign up? So that was very good. So I, my takeaway from that was that clearly we need to have a pick your color campaign and we need to have a uh, pick, uh, name your center campaign so that, so that it will resonate with the young people. And so, it, so it's not us calling it a youth center. They'll be able to call it what they think it should be called and it, sh it should look the way they think it should look in terms of colors. So there was very, very good feedback. They asked me a lot of questions and uh, we're, we're gonna start that pick your color, name your center campaign pretty soon with the youth. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Ms. Francois. Uh, Councilman Onizaka. Yeah. Now, first of all, I would like to congratulate our, um, our girls' uh, basketball team. Uh, they've done us proud, and they are flying a Franklin flag, which means anywhere they go, they represent us very, very well. Um, another thing is, uh, I want to uh, express how delighted I am today after the meeting when I noticed that most of um, the dilapidated roads in Third World will be taken care of this year. Most of them are really in bad shape and um, it has been guaranteed that they all be taken care of. Most especially roads like uh, uh, Jack's Lane Braga Lane and some of these lanes, only very few that will be taken care of next year. So I'm very, very delighted that uh, those roads will be taken care of. And my residents will have the privilege of enjoying good roads uh, one more. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, Councilman Will Geltier. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, real briefly, uh, this Saturday, we had two opening days for sports. Uh, congratulations to, to Franklin Township Baseball League on their 67th consecutive year. Um, exciting to see all the teams out on the field uh, and and the fresh uh, fresh faces getting ready to uh, go out and play. So enjoy the season. Congratulations also to uh, the soccer club who is celebrating 40th year this year. And um, from what I understand, they're also uh, having a tournament in the next couple or at the end of uh, April. So good luck with that. Um, and and what I want to say is that for for the youth sports um, and just talking with some of the organizers, 
they didn't realize that uh, this is impression, or they, they know how important it is to get the youth out, but how impressionable it is, because I was reminding them of how, uh, when I got to play soccer, of the fields that we were using, and they forgot about some of it. Many of them been with the club for a long time, so um, it does stand out, and uh, it's a good way for to get kids out and, and play and exercise and build teamwork, similar to what we saw with the uh, girls' basketball team also, that when teamwork, uh, when you learn teamwork and it helps in your future, uh, if in uh, as you grow. Um, with that being said, is CIT uh, application still available? Or is it I, I believe so. I, okay. the, and and I will while you're talking, I will okay. look it up and so, report it in mind. I so got the reason the I say that is because that. I remember soccer. I remember CIT <clears throat> uh, being a counselor in training. So if you're in ninth or tenth grade, please uh, get out and volunteer if you have the time. It's a great way to um, to it's. One, it's good for a resume. Two, it's it's good to work with younger kids, and again, it it um, it's something to do in the summertime. Uh, I attended the Amwell Road public hearing uh, meeting for the project there. Uh, there, the project should be starting in the fall, hopefully. Uh, the goal is to maintain part at least one direction uh, or one lane um, throughout the project, and there will be traffic controls in place. I did get the chance to talk to the. Uh, county engineer about another project which I am following in town uh, so mr. guy I didn't we are taking into account other projects that need to be done I don't have more information that I on that yet but hoping to have soon um, Franklin Township sewage Authority we uh, will be introducing the budget at a special meeting on April 15th that has been a notification uh, May's meeting then will be uh, moved to May 13th um, due to just majority of the staff will be at a conference the the week of our normal scheduled motion uh, meeting uh, we're hoping to approve the budget at that meeting based on state approval of course but there will be a public hearing at that time uh, as as currently introduced there will be no increase uh, no rate increase um, under the proposed budget this year and we are hoping to carry that on the future meeting as well I do apologize for any inconvenience on the roads that we've been having. We've been trying to uh, fix some of the uh, <laughs> some pipelines that uh, have a, uh, some issues that have appeared over the past week. So uh, I do apologize for the inconvenience. They're working to uh, minimize any inconvenience. We did have DPW or Department of Public Works uh, tonight with the road repaving, but also I've been getting some notice or requests about trash at the parks. Um, it's great the parks are being used. Please be mindful when using the parks to try to use the trash cans if possible. But uh, crews will be starting to go out to put the recycling bins and collect the trash um, as quickly as possible. Uh, I would ask just po if uh, you do see trash is overflowing, if you can just notify, uh, I guess, the Parks and Rec, or no, sorry, the uh, Department Public of Works. Public Works. Um, and it, it might just have been they missed it for the day on the round. So um, it, it, an extra phone call doesn't really hurt it, but they are working to try to clean up the parks and make sure that they're usable. Um, upcoming meetings, uh, possibly admin committee, I believe, for this Thursday, and I have fire prevention this Thursday as well. And that's it, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, can I read into the record the right name of that event since I messed it up? It was called the Franklin Middle School at Hamilton Street Campus, 13th Annual College and Career Fair which happened on Wednesday, March 27th. So you can put that in the notes. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman and Councilmen. Councilwoman Pruitt. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I wanna echo the sentiments of my colleagues and congratulate the Franklin High School women's basketball team as a Franklin High School graduate who I cannot, I, I don't think we were good at sports when I was in high school. So this is really, <laughs> really, really great um, to kind of see and develop, and I'm extremely proud of our girls' basketball team and all of our Franklin High School students, past and present. Um, the only committee that I am on that has met between the last council meeting was Advisory Health. Um, there was a lot of discussion about the pipeline, um, and um, the pipeline deadline for comments to NJDEP has been extended to May 2nd, so interested parties um, should consider making comments about the water permits. Um, it was a lively discussion on advisory of health uh, because of concerns of, you know, potential, uh, not just environmental uh, impacts, but also 
impacts of health. Um, so that was at Advisory of Health. Um, moving on, I will be out with our police this Saturday. So if you see me riding around, uh, give me a wave. I will be out there with them um, doing my monthly ride along. Um, additionally, I will be at the Franklin High School Hamilton, or excuse me, Franklin Middle School. It was my high school when I was there for the Franklin Middle School uh, Hamilton Street campus for their local government week, speaking to students about what it means to be in local government and hopefully encouraging uh, the young students to get more and more involved in their government to the best of their ability. And that's all I have. Thank you, Councilwoman, Deputy Mayor. Jim Vassanella. Thank you, Mayor. Um, as Councilman Will mentioned, we were at the Little League along with the Mayor, and I don't know if you mentioned the fact that 67 continuous open-end days, that's pretty, that's pretty remarkable. The longest continuously running uh, youth group sports organization in, in the town, and um, I applaud their efforts. Um, Public Works, Councilman Chase had mentioned, I just wanted to also mention that we will probably be coming to Council with an ordinance recommendation, probably the next meeting or two, uh, which will give the town much more control over when our roads get, um, lack of a better term, chopped up, opened for work by utility companies, uh, sewage, whatever may need to be done. and. Although the work needs to be done, a lot of times we're, we're left with a, a situation which we have patchwork in our streets and some of them which were repaved recently. And um, obviously we, we, we don't want that. So we have, we'll have greater control over holding the entities responsible to leave a better um, result relevant to the road and the paving. Uh, when this kind of work is done. So that's going to be forthcoming. It's been, I mentioned it because we've been working on it on quite some time and I think will really help our town um, with our paving and our infrastructure efforts. Um, and one other thing, um, although it may seem very little uh, to do in the greater scheme of things, there's a little section between Franklin Township slash Somerset County and New Brunswick and Middlesex County where there's an old piece of cement roadway. And um, when you have multiple um, entities responsible, counties, it's a state road, there's all kinds of um, variables. Sometimes it gets, uh, doesn't get attended to and we're very close to closing in and having uh, all the groups, including Franklin, have come together. And if anybody's aware, the little area between the border of New Brunswick and the light at French Street and Route 27 there, um, that whole area is going to the street wise and what goes under the street is going to finally be brought up to uh, where it needs to be. So another thing that's been in the works for a long time. So I just wanted to mention that. And um, congratulations to the people we honor tonight. I remember when we appointed uh, Sharon, I believe, to, yeah. to human relations and to health, the health um, advisory board and boy, time goes quick, but that all the examples tonight were, uh, especially with our youth, uh, a real example of um, what we what we produce in this town, what comes out of this town, and I'm grateful for it. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor, and I can't quite do it to you, Councilman uh, Wright. Do you do you have you missed your turn? Do you have anything to say? I blew it. Um, I passed a note on for Audrey Taylor, USA Coach of the Year. It just slipped my mind completely. So she will get that certificate. I saw it in the hallway. We put it together. It's in the mail. Deba, isn't it in the mail? See what I mean? So, <laughs> so it's in the mail. Um, no committee reports. Um, oh, and I think you'll speak on it, but... When we get to the consent agenda, if the manager would just talk about establishing and adopting complete uh, streets policy, we'll, we'll, that'd be a boom whenever it gets there. Thank you. I will so I'll, I'll defer to Councilman Chase on that, I Councilman, just so you know, he's the expert. Okay. So when we get to the consent agenda, we can discuss the consent agenda. <laughs> Order. Um, 
Okay. Um, thank you. Uh, so what I would like to uh, discuss is, of course, um, again, congratulating our, balance, our basketball team uh, and Sharin, uh, two amazing aspects of our town. Uh, on the 28th, I um, went to Trenton. Those of you who follow me on Facebook might notice that. Um, and um, uh, the first meeting I had was about the compressor station, and I'm surprised uh, the councilwoman didn't uh, mention it uh, because I owe it to her that uh, I was there. She was acting uh, as councilwoman and in her uh, day job as uh, the uh, chief of staff to uh, Assemblyman Zwicker, and um, she got me in the room so that uh, all of us there could discuss the compressor station with the um, staff of the governor. Um, and I was a little disappointed that they didn't know more than they did, but uh, we spent quite a bit of time educating them on it, and hopefully that will move them forward. So I, I thank the councilwoman for some unprecedented access um, uh, on, to Trenton. Uh, that wouldn't have happened without her. Um, also, uh, I then, that was on the third floor, I went up to the fifth floor, and I met with the governor himself. And uh, the thanks there go to uh, Assemblyman Danielson, uh, and we were discussing some education issues specific to Franklin, um, and um, had a very useful um, conversation with the governor. The governor was quite interested in uh, some of the issues uh, that are going on. I was accompanied by a member of the BOE, Ed Potasnik, um, uh, and the assemblyman, and I think we got our points across, so I was, I was quite happy um, uh, to have that opportunity to speak to the governor, and thank you, uh, Assemblyman Danielson, for making that happen. Um, the next item is uh, a little bit on a personal note. Um, so I just... If the camera can focus in on that, I just took my hearing aid out. I, these are, I don't own these yet, but I'm um, trying them out. And uh, it was actually quite strange when I took it out. There's a stigma amongst people to, um, to not wear hearing aids when they need them. And um, that's a shame because uh, what hearing aids really are for is for amplifying um, voice, the human voice, so you can hear it better. Uh, I, and uh, engage you in com conversation. And I know I'm going to open myself up for ridicule but uh, when I say this, but recent um, studies have shown that if uh, those, you match people with need hearing aids and people, and don't get hearing aids, and people who need hearing aids and do get hearing aids, the ones who do get hearing aids uh, are much less likely to develop dementia. So I'm sure the comment from up here will be too late, but um, <laughs> but I'm trying the best I can. <laughs> I just beat you all to it. Um, but uh, I do recommend, and, and it is federal law, if you buy a hearing aid, you have 30 days to return it uh, if you don't like it and get, your get a full refund. So uh, I encourage people who need it to, uh, to get them. Um, uh, the the um, second to last item, is uh, so I perform weddings and has been mentioned that the mayor gets fifty dollars for the weddings. All I never see the money. All of it goes directly to uh, the animal shelter. Uh, I do not take tips. I've refused them before, and uh, one gentleman um, insisted and put it in my pocket. And I felt the only way I could stop him was was to physically have a, a physical incident with him to give it back, so I, I obviously didn't want to go there. So uh, I am openly, openly passing this to the manager to give that to the animal shelter, and it should be, uh, Siba, it should be in the name, not this last bunch of weddings, but the weddings before that, the groom of the very first wedding, that's whose name it should go under. Okay, thank you. Um, I do not take tips for weddings, but if you insist, it will go to the animal shelter. Um, and then the last, thank you, Mr. Guy, uh, for that information, and I will uh, be contacting council, uh, Councilwoman out of habit 
um, freeholder uh, Chanel Robinson uh, to learn more about that, and we'll take up that opportunity. So I thank you for that information. Mr. Manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, first, uh, ca capitalizing on your announcement about hearing aids, I'd, I'd just like to shamelessly plug one of our larger corporate um, residents here in Franklin Township, Oticon, off Campus Drive, which is one of the world's largest manufacturers of hearing aids. And if you need one, you can go to their website, and they have many different resources for those in need. I'll be um, turning these shameless. back in to get uh, Oticon. There you go. Um, so uh, a couple things to report on upcoming events. Uh, the first being, if I can click on this, the first being on this Friday, April 12th, here in this room, as uh, where we're meeting tonight, will be a blood drive sponsored by the Township of Franklin and the New Jersey Blood Services from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, Walk-ins are certainly welcome. If you are interested in giving blood and wish to make an appointment, you can do so through a link from our website. Um, the blood drive is in the spotlight on the main page of the website. <coughs> Next, on uh, Saturday, the 13th, from 1 to 3, um, at the uh, community center here in the municipal complex will be our annual bunny jamboree. Uh, with egg hunts starting at 1 for ages 4 and under and 1.30 for ages 5 and older. Uh, Non-perishable food items will be accepted to benefit the Franklin Township Food Bank. And then to answer Councilman Galtieri's question earlier, um, the Recreation Department is always seeking uh, CITs and counselors for the camp programs. Um, registration for our summer camp programs is now open. Um, the youth camps for ch kids entering grades one through six and our brand new teen travel camp for teens entering grades seven through nine. Registration is available online through the website or in person at the community center at 505 DeMott Lane. And then um, Mr. Mayor, I'd just like to take that opportunity for just a, a little bit of, um, I, I guess, a tutorial on local government. We often get questions about organizations and, and entities such as the Franklin Township Sewerage Authority or the fire companies. Um, there are links to all of those organizations on our website, but uh, many of them, and I'll list them now, many of them are not part of the municipal government. The Franklin Township Sewerage Authority is an autonomous organization that provides sanitary sewer to a portion of the township, and they are governed by a board of directors. Um, there is a council liaison, uh, but they have a separate budget, and they have separate rules and, and bylaws that they abide by, and they are not, we, we do not collect payments for the Franklin Township Sewerage Authority. Um, you can't pay your bill here. We don't, we don't collect their bill. Um, there are four fire districts in Franklin Township. Each fire district um, is, is, uh, is oversees the fire services in certain parts of town. Um, those fire districts have independently elected board of fire commissioners. The public elects them. The budgets are adopted by the public through an election, pro uh, through a, a, they have an election day in February where you elect um, commissioners and, and vote on their budget. Um, they, are, they are not part of the municipal government. There is a Franklin Township Housing Authority that oversees public housing and Section 8 housing in Franklin Township. Again, there is a separate board of directors for the housing authority, and they have a separate budget, and, and they, do not, they are not part of the municipal government. Um, I, I bring this up just because m many times, uh, people who have lived here for a very long time, if you don't have sewers, you may not realize that the sewerage authority and not the municipal government is where that bill is paid and, and uh, the money is not part of your taxes. Um, and the same goes, you know, so there is a fire tax for the fire districts. You know, you have 10 fire companies that make up those four fire districts in the township. And, and that money is raised through a separate tax, not through your municipal taxes. And, and the housing authority is primarily funded by money from the federal government, the housing and urban development. Um, but, but if you have questions, I say that on, there is about Franklin is a tab on our website. And all of the websites to all of those different entities are listed there. And if you wonder about them, then you can certainly explore it there. And that's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Mr. Chase, did you want to make a motion? Mr. Mayor, 
seeing a large number of people who I think are here to, for the hearing on the changes in the zoning ordinance, I would move to move the council discussion item until after the, the hearing on the ordinances that are up for adoption after second reading. So I'll take that as a motion. Do we have a second? Second it. All in favor say aye. 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 Approved. So we're, right we're just changing the order of the it's on, it's on, it's on. agenda slightly to up move up the uh, issue. We think that's important to the uh, people that are here. Very quickly, we'll go through the minutes and warrants, and then we'll be to that hearing. So do I have an approval for minutes for council work session, regular meeting, March 26, 2019 at 7? So moved. Seconded. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Any changes? All in, I'm sorry, Madam Clerk. Pardon? Please call the roll. Please call the roll. Yes. <laughs> Councilman Chase? Yes. <laughs> Councilwoman Francois? Yes. Councilman Gateri? Yes. Mayor Kramer? Yes. Councilman Onijaka? Yes. Councilman Passat? Yes. Councilwoman Pirit? Yes. Deputy Mayor Vassanella? Yes. Councilman Wright? Yes. Usually that magically happens when I say that. Okay, approval of the warrants. So warrants in the amount of fourteen million eight hundred and forty-seven thousand ten dollars and twenty-six cents on April 9th, two thousand and nineteen, are presented to the township clerk for payment. Um, do we have a motion on the I warrants? I move that the so warrants moved. as read be paid. Moved, and I'll take that as a motion and a second. Right. Any discussion? Anyone want to change anything on the warrants? Questions on the warrants? Hearing none. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Councilman Chase? Yes. Councilwoman Francois? Yes. Councilman Galtieri? Yes. Mayor Kramer? Yes. Councilman Onijaka? Yes. Councilman Passad? Yes. Councilwoman Pirit? Yes. Deputy Mayor Vassanella? Yes. Councilman Wright? Yes. So we've had a seismic shift here uh, in the audience. Um, the warrants passed. So we are now on to public hearing and adoption of ordinance on second reading. Um, uh, ordinance 4271-19, an ordinance amending the code of the Township of Franklin <laughs> County of Somerset, State of New Jersey, more particularly Chapter 112, Land Development Section 112-6, Zoning Map, is presented for public hearing and final adoption. The public hearing has been noticed as required. Do I have a motion to open to the public? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor of opening to the public, say ah. Uh, well, aye. I'm sorry. Aye. Uh, uh, yeah, hang on. I'm sorry. I'm not going to open to the public yet because I thought right. it might be better for Mr. Healy yeah. to present and then we will open to the public. Yeah. Or, You're ignoring Councilman Vassanelli. Oh, but Councilman Vassanelli, you have a motion. <laughs> hang, hang, hang on. If everyone could hold it down a little bit here. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'm good. The, the councilman, I think, has a motion to amend the ordinance, and I suggested to him that that motion be made prior to the public hearing so that the public hearing take into account what, from a procedural point of view. I mean, Robert's rules boggle. Um, okay. Well, and, and, on, and the only reason I say that, Mayor, is because um, the ordinance requires a public hearing, and I just think that it would be, it's, record it's cleaner if it's amended and the public hearing is on the ordinance as amended if council so chooses if council chooses not to amend the ordinance then the public hearing will proceed on as it is introduced so okay so before we do that let's have miss the, the mic would okay hello i think the audience okay. needs to not talk and then you'll hear him okay Okay. Well, that worked. Well, okay, okay, folks, we're trying. You can hear me now? Good. Okay, we've solved one problem. We'll try to solve the rest. Okay, before I, I hear what you say, before we do that, why don't we have Mr. Healy present what's going on? Then I would like to hear from Mr. Vassanella, and we can proceed from there. Mr. Healy. Okay. Uh, well, first of all, I'm Mark Healy, I am the township planner. Uh, the reason for this ordinance is uh, the township planning board, by law, every 10 years uh, has to ex examine the township's zoning ordinance and master plan, uh, and we're in the middle of that. Uh, the township, the planning board adopted a document that's called the master plan reexamination in 2016, and 
the three ordinances or, or three changes that I'll present uh, were recommended in that reexamination report. The first one, uh, I've put up a map here of the canal walk area, and I'll explain, I'll, I'll orient everybody. This is Mettler's. This is schoolhouse going up, uh, up, up top, Weston Canal Road, and Weston Road. So in the 90s, when the township created the Senior Citizen Village Zone, the entirety of that super block, I'll call it, a, it's a big block, was put in that Senior Citizen Village Zone. A few years after that, sometime after that, the developer acquired properties and is in the process of completing the build out of the Canal Walk development. There are a few properties that were not included in Canal Walk. There are, are single family homes here. There's a large undeveloped property at the corner of Weston Canal and Schoolhouse. A few uh, scattered single family homes on smaller lots along Weston Canal and Weston. They remain in the senior citizen village zone. Um, what that really means then is that's really no effective zoning for those properties. Uh, the requirements of the Canal Walk, well actually let me first say, if you live in Canal Walk, this doesn't affect your properties at all. Nobody who lives in Canal Walk is having their properties rezoned. This is the properties that are not in Canal Walk that remain in the senior citizen village zone. If you were noticed, you were noticed because you're within 200 feet of one of those properties. So what the, what the proposal is, is to place those properties that are not in Canal Walk in an appropriate residential zone. Because right now, those homes are actually non-conforming. In order to, they can't build Canal Walk on two acres. Um, so the, what, the, what the proposal is, is the larger of the properties these two properties on Schoolhouse, this large undeveloped property at the corner, this larger property on Weston, the proposal is to put those in the A zone, which is uh, a single family residential zone, the, the least, uh, the most rural, I should say, zone that we have. Um, and that's the zoning that those properties were in before they were zoned to the senior citizen village zone. And it's also the zoning of the surrounding area. So basically it's taking the A zone and kind of dragging it over to this, to apply to this property, dragging it over to apply to this property, dragging it over to apply to that property. The smaller properties, which are all in the neighborhood of about an acre, we're gonna actually keep them in the senior citizen village zone, but the ordinance has language that says the setback requirements, et cetera, of the R40 zone, which is the one acre zone, applies to those individual lots. So if those homeowners want to put an addition on their house, you know, put a deck in their backyard, you know, a shed, there's actually some applicable requirements that staff can apply to those properties. As of right now, there's no guide. If one of those homes wanted to put a little addition in the back of their property, we'd have to send them to the zoning board for use variance. We don't want to do that. We want to apply some appropriate standards. So again, the larger properties would go in that six acre zone to what they were zoned before and what's across the street. And again, the smaller zones, the smaller properties would have, they're in the neighborhood of one acre, would have the one acre zone requirements applied to them. So that's the first one. So in short, basically what you're trying to do is rezone it to the way it is now. That's, that's yes, that's a very good way to summarize it, Mr. Okay. Mayor. Okay, this next one I think should be about as straightforward as it gets. Um, this property, Canal Walk's over here. This is uh, Mettler's and Weston. This property here at the corner, at the, the southeast corner, is actually in the ROL zone. It's Research Office Laboratory. Uh, that's the current zoning. But it was recently purchased by the county for open space. And we have a recommendation in the master plan that if either the state or the county or the township preserves lands, you should put it in the least dense zoning district. So we're pulling that zone, you know, this is, this is Colonial Park, we're just dragging that A zone and applying it to that property. That's, that's that um, proposal. And that lot is, by the way, for those who don't know it, fields right now. It's fields now, and again, it was purchased by the county for open space purposes, so the research office laboratory zone 
doesn't make sense, doesn't apply to that property anymore. So we're just putting it in the low density zone because it's going to remain open. And occasionally there's a sighting of a stork there or something? Sandhill cranes, Sand cranes. Sandhill cranes that have been coming to winter in the township for about 10 years now. Uh, that lot is the one where they were principally seen uh, this last winter. And then this last change is in a, a totally different area of the township uh, and, and completely different zoning districts. Um, again, in looking at the township zoning map, you know, part of the exercise in doing the reexamination is trying to, you know, seems to some zones that don't quite um, make sense from a planning perspective. And in doing that, we realize that um, this is, um, these are all, this is a neighborhood off of DeMott, not too far from here. This is Ellison Road. This is Gates Road. Um, several dozen, uh, two dead end streets, several dozen homes. The, about 90% of the neighborhood is in the R40 zone, which is one acre lots for some reason, just that this last portion at the end is in the R20 zone, which is half acre lots. So the planning board sees that and kind of says, well, that doesn't make sense. You know, if this is two dead end streets, kind of a little one discrete neighborhood, those, if these properties were ever developed in the future, they should also be subject to R40 like the rest of the neighborhood. Um, so that's basically the, the recommendation for that to bring, it doesn't affect the properties off Renfro. So some, some people may have been noticed if they're off Chandler, Hughes, Rosewood, or Renfro, does not affect your property. You were noticed because you're within 200 feet. But again, these last few properties, the proposal is, is to rezone these from half acre, half acre zoning to one acre zoning like the rest of the neighborhood. That's it, Mr. Mayor. Okay, so before you go, Mr. Vassanella, normally now what we do is we have a public discussion and then council speaks. Councilman Vassanella wants to make an amendment to the ordinance. Uh, I was initially uncomfortable for that with that because we would wanna hear from you before we had our discussion, but the attorney has a very good reason why, so if you could give that reason. Yes, Mr. Mayor. The, the there are some changes to ordinances on second reading that would require us to re-advertise if there are material changes and therefore not have the public hearing tonight and have it two weeks from now because we'd have to re-advertise. But there are some changes that are that are minor in nature and in this circumstance is what uh, Castleman Fastanella is, is going to propose to do which is to remove some of the lot and blocks out of one of the sections of the ordinance. And since it would not require further advertising I always thought, and I and I and I believe that the best uh, practice would be to do the amendment first, so that it's cleaner to have the public hearing on the ordinance as it would be in its final form. Um, and I and because otherwise, what would happen is that you'd have a public hearing on an ordinance that would then subsequently be amended. There would be no further public hearing, and it just I I, I believe it makes the record less clear. So that's my reason. So we're going to have this discussion, and then you're going to get an opportunity to speak. Correct. Okay. Okay, Mr. Vassanella. Thank you, Mayor. So try to be brief and keep it simple. Mainly, we've been following this, uh, working on this through land use for quite some time, as we do a lot of these zoning changes. And the planner can correct me or add to the uh, commentary if he if he thinks anything needs to be clarified. But the Areas here all have three diff very different history and needs. Um, basically over here, and the one that I'm concerned with uh, making a minor um, amendment to the ordinance is you have the first one with Canal Walk. That was changed so we can build out and have that clustered high density senior development. Um, it was changed, and then when we saw that area, as, as the planner uh, explained, um, now it's irrelevant that's been, the build-out's been there, and basically they are, in a way, I think you said, basically do not have, have a zoning, a non-conforming zoning, so it cleans it up, and that's its own history. The other situation is where the county bought the land 
and as you explained. Um, and I don't want to put words in the mouth of the planner, but I think those were really of a concern and a focus and kind of initiated the, this ordinance in general. You get to this area over here, though, and I, we didn't look at the record, but trying a comprehensive review of this so we can understand it. That's been, that zoning's been in place pretty much forever or as long as there's been homes built there. Um, what I'm concerned with, and I've expressed this concern um, earlier on in, in land use and I, I think in, in other situations, is that when you have a zoning change, if you end up making people's properties, and there'll only be a few, but there'll be a few um, from, from the work we looked at, the map, non-conforming, it kind of is the opposite of what we're doing with the other properties. We're trying to make things conforming. So if we do, if we leave this portion in, you'll have a few properties that will be non-conforming. And if they, somebody wanted to put a garage, a pool, add on a mother-daughter suite, et cetera, they'd have to go through the variance process, the exact process, the, with the zoning board, the exact process that um, we suggested we're trying to avoid with the other zoning changes. You have that element of it. And then you also have the fact that you have people who, um, been paying taxes for decades, sometimes generations, and their personal um, uh, quality of life and their anything from their future plans or their estate planning or whatever is based on something that's been in place since since any of the houses were there. To go and uproot and turn upside down and have, a, even if it's just a few houses left with non-conforming lots, which devalue your property, and anybody who does, does their due diligence at closing, if they go to sell their property, boy, that can just ruin a deal or obviously devalue and go back to negotiations, whatever. But there's a variety of concerns. I don't think this falls anywhere near in the same categories with the other uh, properties that I wholeheartedly support, and I think that was the main focus. Um, the spirit of these ordinance changes were really the the major concerns from the two, uh, or the other concerns from the first two that um, our planner showed you. So, from a fairness perspective, I, I personally just think, I mean, we're, the buck stops with us. We're council. There's general planning practices, and in a general sense, this, this would fall under general planning principles. But we need to look at history. We need to look at specific details. We need to look at why are we doing this and how are we affecting people's lives. So as a governing body, it's not that the general planning principles are wrong, but we need to take a deeper look and make sure we're being as fair and handling it in a way that doesn't disrupt what in some cases are generations of people's li people living there and all of a sudden we're pulling the rug out from under in their property. And I'm not saying anybody's doing something bad or purposefully to hurt anybody. Like the planner said, it's part of just general planning practices. So in summary, and I don't want to go in, there's more details, and, but I, 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 in summary what I would like to do is make a motion to simply, and, and, and by the way, if we do go through with this motion, we can always go back. If it seemed like, oh my God, we must do this, we can always go back and change that zoning. But for now, I think it's, I just don't think it's fair and needed at this time. So my motion is simply to remove what has been referred to as the, uh, a minor change and remove the lots in Ellison and uh, Gates, um, the last slide up there, from the ordinance and proceed with the rest of the zoning changes, which I believe are more important and more substantial. That, that's my, my, my motion to the ordinance. Mayor? That's your amendment to the ordinance. I'm sorry, my motion to amend the ordinance. Okay, do we Don't. have a second? Oh, sorry. Do we have a second to his motion to amend the ordinance? Mayor? Second. So we, we have a second. Councilwoman? I just, I, sorry, I just had a clarification question to what you're trying to amend. Are you trying to amend the lots in between Gates and Ellis? No, I think it, what we're talking Entire. about doing is... Ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. Thank you. We'll, we'll, we'll try to get what, along our way. Ca Councilwoman, I, uh, all we're talking about doing is essentially deleting section four, Roman numeral four of the ordinance. Okay. So all, all of that section would just come out. Thank you. So this what, entire change would slide. come out. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks.
is there is there other discussion on the hey, hang on yeah hang on is there other discussion on this amendment councilman wright Use your mic, please. That that slide is that that slide in that slide in total is section four of the ordinance. So, so in the other re words, we'd be adopting the ordinance without that change. So the rezoning of the R twenty lots on, on Ellison and Gates would right. be removed from the ordinance amendment. Correct. Okay. So That's it, it would, would stay. So, so, it would so they would no longer be affected by this ordinance amendment. Only okay. the the uh, schoolhouse and Weston Road. Parcels would be affected by this rezoning. Okay. Okay. Is there other discussion on the amendment to the ordinance? So I, I, I need to understand from Mark why. What was the rationale for this again? Oh, the, the rationale is is that the, the, the entire about ninety percent of the neighborhood is is in the one acre zone, um, with the exception of the last few properties at the end, which are in the half acre zone. There are a number of larger. Um, oversized properties that can be subdivided in the future. Um, and the planning board in looking at this felt that if that neighborhood was developed further, it should be developed at the same density as the rest of the neighborhood on Gates and Ellison. So, so, so that, that was the reason for the recommendation. And, and just a little history here. So I think that there was some questions and, and, and maybe I can impart a little bit of history here. So the, the divider between this neighborhood and the neighborhood off of JFK Boulevard is a stream. And the stream constitutes the, the border between the blocks uh, that, that are, exist here. On the east side of the stream, which is the, basically the back of St. Matthias Church and its property owned by St. Matthias Church, and then the R20 lots of Levitt are zoned R20. The, the bulk of the property between the stream and DeMott Lane, which constitutes all of the building lots along Gates Road and Ellison Road, except for the very end, those lots that adjoin the stream that have either been held intact or have been subdivided over the years are in the R20. Somewhere along the way, they got lumped in with the Levitt subdivision and then the Calton Home subdivision of Magnolia Road that took place either in the 60s or then in the late 70s and early 80s. So these lots were, were lumped together with a neighborhood that really wasn't contiguous with the neighborhood. They got lumped together with the neighborhood on the other side of the stream. And, and so I think the planning board looked at that and said, you know, and, and remember too that there was a time where both Ellison Road and Gates Road were proposed to go all the way through to what was then Loop Lane, as now JFK Boulevard, all right? There was supposed to be a crossing of that stream, and if you look at how those roads align, Gates Road was supposed to come out to JFK Boulevard, and Ellison Road was supposed to come out to Renfro, and they were supposed to connect, and that never happened. So when the planning board many, many years ago looked at that, I'm sure they looked at it and said that it makes more sense that these lots be in the R20. But now those things never happened, and so now you're stuck with a, with a parcel of land on one side of the stream that's R20, and the rest of the road is R40. So that was, the, I think, the concern of the planning board was to be, um, uh, to, to have a, a, a continuous zoning along a street tends to make sense from a planning point of view. So that that's kind of history in a nutshell, one-on-one. Was this vetted in land use? It absolutely was. Yeah. So how did the recommendation get here? Well, it's part of the bigger ordinance. And at the time, because I know I, I was very specific in looking if there'd be people left with non-conforming properties if we do this change, and then the, the, the other open lots, which was it originally um, R40 and then change the R20 and now we're changing it back. But my information from, from looking into it and, and uh, talking in detail with, with our planner is that um, there are indeed would be some left non-conforming and there'd be a real burden on them if they go to do anything. And w I'll pause. Go ahead. And, and then the other aspect aspect that um, to no fault of the owners, 
who bought it based on what the township had it zoned as and have, you know, depending how long they've been there, their lives were, their tax has been paid in whatever short or long-term plans they have with their property or, um, or, or the lots, adjacent lots, we're, we're changing something that, in my opinion, simply is, is just, uh, it's unfair to do it this way unless there's a compelling reason. To me, there's no compelling reason. The other areas, which I th believe were the main focus of why we were, you know, more substantially looking to clean up this situation. Ironically, we're gonna do now the opposite of what we're doing with the other properties we're doing and to bring them back to the conformity of what they were. In this one, we're gonna end up, though, some people end up with the exact opposite. So again, it, it's, it's general planning principles, I agree, but when you, 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 it affects people's lives the way it does, I think you need to peel away and look at, at all the details. And it's not, um, well, I'll leave it at that for now. So again, I'm just looking to make this, this minor change. And if everybody feels it's so important and substantial, this council can always come back and uh, change this zoning if they so please. Okay, Mr. Wright. Will you use your mic, please? I'm sorry, I, I, I called him Jimmy. Uh, Councilman Bassanella just said, and then what the township manager said, um, I got thrown off track. Um, I'm trying to follow this thing here, but we dip and ebb, and I just want to make sure I got this right before someone kicks the ball here. Um, I'm going to defer myself to Councilman Chase because I saw him raise his hand, and he knows better than me because he's on the planning board, uh, and Mark is our planning expert here. Uh, Councilman Chase? Oh, the first thing is I wanted to ask Mr. Raynone, do we have to vote on the amendment before we have the public hearing? Because I'd like to hear from the public right, on I, the subject. I'm uncomfortable with that myself. You, you certainly do not. You, you, you certainly do not. Council, you can, you, you, you don't, I, that, that was just my suggestion. So you certainly don't, don't have to do that. The one, the one thing that I just wanted to point out that there are two different kind of classes of property here, Mark, correct me if I'm wrong. There are those properties that are slightly under an acre that under an R20 zone would be non-conforming. But more importantly, that there are a couple of fairly substantial sized properties that would be subject to being developed. And if you leave them as R20, they'll have twice as many houses as they would if they were R40. And that's the part that is inconsistent with the remainder of the neighborhood. Yeah, and, and that's, I think that's kind of the, in a way, the, the pros and cons of this and, right. and why, you know, ultimately it's, it's a council decision. There are, um, I think most of the properties are still going to comply with the R40. These properties are 40,000 square feet. Um, this property is, certainly these are. Um, this was proposed as a flag lot, I, I, I believe, they would still comply. This one would be undersized, um, but really the undersized part really isn't the um, the issue. That doesn't that in and of itself doesn't trigger variances. Uh, those homes that I just pointed out, these homes, um, there are larger setback requirements in the R40 zone, so there is the potential for those existing homes uh, if they wanted to do additions. There might be variances that might be triggered by being in the R40 zone, that wouldn't happen if they were in the R20. So that is the negative. The positive is, again, what I explained, uh, if, if you consider it a positive from the planning board's perspective and why they proposed this, was there are a few larger, um, potentially subdividable lots, and if those were to be subdivided, the planning board felt that the R40 should apply because that's the zoning of the rest of the neighborhood. So there are pros and cons, and so, obviously it's a council decision. So my question would be, if we were to not change it versus change it, so if we leave it this way, how many additional homes could be built? It's, it's a very good question, Mr. Mayor, but I, I don't have an answer for you, and the reason is that the, the lots are very, um, you can see how they're, they're very regularly shaped. Very regular. 
Can there's also give, wetlands. There's also can flood you give plains. me an order of magnitude? Is it two I, houses? Is I, it I, thirty houses? No, is no, it no. no. Order of magnitude, no. I would say, if less than ten. I, mean, I would say uh, exactly. if both of these. Whoa! Just appeared. If both of those larger properties at the end were subdivided together, maybe you'd get an extra two or three. Two or three. That okay. order of magnitude. Okay. Most yeah. of the, most of the lots are already developed, Mr. Mayor. So it, it really and 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 even the largest lot. In, in the, the largest lot in the lot, um, has a house on it now. Um, it's a little over five acres. It's the last lot on the right. Yeah. And it has been previously subdivided and two lots had been subdivided off of it. And the, it's those two lots that would probably create um, the, the situation where you have an undersized lot in the R40 versus the R20. Uh, the two lots that were subdivided off the larger lot previously, and then there's one lot across the street that's that's undersized as well. And so there's really three that that constitute a, 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 an issue there. I mean, this is really kind of, again because the lots are oddly shaped because of the constraints. Just to give you an order of magnitude, maybe you'd get three instead of five. That, okay. That order of magnitude. And, right. and the other, and the other thing is, you know, th what would constitute common sense can't be applied here. Common sense would be leave the ones that are undersized R20 and only rezone the land that's not undersized R40, but you can't spot zone. So that 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 doesn't that's not allowed. So that's okay. what constitutes the dilemma here. All right. So is there other discussion? Well, all right. Okay. So what I would ask is the person who motioned and second to with to amend to withdraw their motion and second and then we can go to public discussion and you can reintroduce that after the public discussion. Yeah, that's fine. I, I'm happy to have public but input. That's the just motion, the motion that I, that's fine that I made. Okay, we'll so go back. we've withdrawn that. So you have the original ordinance, you have a possibility of an amending uh, the ordinance, as you've just heard, and now we can hear from the public as to what they think. Do I have a motion to open? Any, I'm sorry, any other discussion, Mr. Is Mr. Raynon okay with that uh, absolutely. procedure? No, I'm, I'm absolutely fine. I think the record's clear. That's fine. Anyone, any other discussion? Okay, so do we have a motion to open for public so discussion? Moved. Second. Moved in, second, and all in favor of opening for public discussion, say aye. 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 Opposed, motion is carried. Uh, so you can come up uh, to speak about this. Uh, there's a lot of people here, so we should probably set a three-minute time limit. Um, and uh, anyone wishing to speak on this item only may do so. Please state your name and address. Can only come up once. No yielding of time. Yes. Pardon? Yes. You gotta. You gotta. To the mic. Oh, you you can speak. It's on about, the ordinance. You can so speak you can, about yeah, any of the. Yeah. Properties. My name's John Livak. I live on 229 Weston Road. I lived there all my life. We have 1.1 acres. And my families have sold territory to uh, Canal Walk. So roughly, I think, 85 acres. Now, why are we getting rezoned? I don't want to be any part of Canal Walk. That's They're zoning. Wait, let him okay, speak. So let, him, wait. let him speak. Their houses are built 20 feet from our property line, our back property line. Now, you're going to make me go through those ordinances? If I want to go through, make a, a building or something? Okay, so, so now he's asked this, a question. This is actually doing the exact opposite. Okay. If you're one of the properties That's on right, Weston Road, explain it. yes. If you're one of the properties on Weston Road, yes, you actually are still in the senior citizen. You actually are in the Canal Walk zone. We're in so the zone, but we're you're, not you're in the zone. That zone. We're R. Was it R five? No, you're you're not. You're you're all of the properties. If you're north of Weston Road, so you're 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 one of these properties. No, I'm. Yeah. Uh, you're on the north yeah, side. Yeah. Thirteen oh two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. That right there. You're still in the senior citizen village zone. So if you wanted to put an expansion on your house, you would right now, you would have to go to the zoning board to do that. Okay. Because your house is actually non-conforming because you're not canal walk. The zone actually just permits only a canal walk. So this zone is going to make you a permitted use, your house. And since you're about an acre in size, the planning board felt, and I think it makes a lot of sense, the setbacks and things like that that apply to your property are going to be the, 
the, the requirements of the R40 zone, which is the one acre zone. So this is to protect the zone out of the ordinance. This will, this yeah, will actually the, protect the, you. The zone that's most like your property, and that's what's going to apply to your property. Because so there's a lot of, a lot of lots there are over an acre. Mine, mine's 1.1. My aunt's next door, 1.1. The people down the road are more than that. Yeah, all, all of these, these properties, these three are all, these are just about one, 1.1, 1. 1, 1. 1. 1.2. That, I think that's 1.4. But again, that R40 zone is the closest zone Get your point. Um, in terms of setbacks and stuff like that okay. to those properties. So as, lo as long as it's at least an acre, yeah. it's it's a an it acre. would become now a conforming lot in an R40 zone. So you, it would protect your property right. the you most. Some questions. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Next. I'm uh, Richard Witzit. You got to speak into the mic, and oh. you have to give your address. Okay, I'm sorry. 71 Constitution Way in Very Canal good. Walk. Uh, if you look at the upper left-hand corner, the largest piece of ground there, which we lovingly call the com the uh, cornfield. Right below that, there's a group of homes that kind of looks like a football stadium. See right below that, the row of houses okay. that back up to the cornfield. That we paid an extra lot premium to have those because the cornfield is there. That's right out our backyard and our patio. If you look at that cornfield, I've enjoyed that pleasure for several years now, as well as some other folks that are here that live in that row. The concerns are, we understood originally that uh, the Zarephath Church, I believe, owned that property. They still did, and that was an agricultural property, although we were told that there may be some possibility that homes could be built there. We all kind of wanted to put that out of our head. But now, if it's going to be rezoned as a residential. No. No. A. A zone is agricultural. That's what it's being oh, it rezoned as. A. Well, Six well, acre well, minimum well, lots. Well, a zone. Every, me, everything me, up there, uh, what we're trying to do is keep it the way it is. As, oh, that would be rezoned A zone, which is agricultural zone, and that's a six acre minimum building lot. Okay. Which well, is so, yeah. Studio. I thought yep. Nope. That's, that's that, that one's going to six acre. <laughs> I thought, okay. I'll, I'll explain. Briefly, again, right now this property is in the senior citizen village zone. Okay. So, I mean, I've certainly heard, maybe other people have heard concerns about somebody trying to build, you know, another right. canal walk or something or expanding canal Which, walk. Or, that is the current zoning. That's what could what, be done now. So what the proposal is, is to put it in the A zone. I, I, if I wasn't clear before, the A zone is a single family zone, but it's one house for every six acres. It's the lowest density zone we have. It's a very rural residential zone. Can't make it any less than that. And that's what the zoning is for across Western Canal, across uh, West and Western Canal, and across Schoolhouse. We're just dragging that A zone over to there. So we're, we're taking the, the least dense zone we have so and while applying you, it to that property. While you could build a home there, while you could build a home there that under the rules, which really we are really zoning it for agriculture. Okay. Exactly what it is now. We are trying to keep that picture the exact way it is now. Who do I hug? <laughs> uh, I, I, this is my wife. What's your question? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm sorry. No hugging these days. No hugging. I'll hug her instead. <laughs> so wait, wait. So wait, 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 wait. Whoa! Excuse me, Mr. Manager. Mr. Manager. Wait. It's one person at the mic at a time. Name and address. I, I, I I'm sorry. I'm. I'm a little pedantic, but I, I like to keep order. Yeah, I'm, I'm that way. All right. Okay, name and address, Donna please. Donna 71 Constitution Way. Great. Canal Walk. Great. So the first two zones that were presented, first two pictures, we're trying to keep them exactly the way they are. So I'm just wondering how, so if you're saying that there are what six acre you said six acre a house on six acre lot i'm just wondering how big is that lot the, the, the manager's yeah. looking that up right and now so how many number one how many houses could be on there
But right now, that football area that he described, you could put two of those in there. Right. So, so yes, while the zoning would allow six houses is what he's saying, yeah. what are there, a hundred, or 50 houses there? You, you Actually, we're, uh, we're not in that little part. We're, we are on the back. No, you're, on the, you're in the single family homes, but what the we're mayor is saying right. is that because that is in the senior citizen village zone, right. Right. Then, so, it, and, and it, it is not out of the realm of possibility, should Pillar of Fire decide to put that on the market, that Premier Homes could buy that and then further expand right. Canal Walk so and complete uh, that type of high density housing on that property as well. So my next question would be, if that was the case, we had an opening because we thought that the builder was going to do that. There was an opening on that street to have access to that property. Where would the access be if it was part of if it was part of Canal Walk, where would the access be on that property? And if it isn't part we, of we, Canal Walk. We have no idea that would be their site plan and we're trying to avoid that. I was, I was, we were under the assumption that because there was no access, that you couldn't access from Schoolhouse or Weston that it would not be able to be built on at this point. Yeah. Well, that, I mean, that large, yeah. oh, you're, that, that large piece of property is certainly accessible from Schoolhouse Road. Hundred, okay. Hundreds of feet of frontage so on Schoolhouse and, from the, sure. Hundreds okay. of feet of frontage on, on Schoolhouse and Weston Canal. So uh, right base. now the zoning is six units to the acre. This is gonna take it from six units to the acre to one house for every six acres. Okay, and one last question, it, because is there somebody, um, a builder who is now interested in that no, property? No. And, the, and it's coming up here or? No, this is, this is, we have had zero discussions with any builders. This is purely from the planning board's evaluation of the master plan and the zoning ordinance. And it would have to be the, the church's. Well, they would have to sell They it. would have to sell that property sure. in order to, for a builder mm -hmm. to build on it. I mean, it's, uh, well, the church could build a development if they so chose on that, if it was still senior citizen village uh, zoning. Pillar of Fire could build housing on that property if they so chose. I mean, they certainly have built housing in the past on right. property that they own, okay. you know, back all the way to 1909. Just um, clarify that even though yeah. it's agricultural, you can still three, three minutes are up. So in short, if you like this map, you like this ordinance. And the amendment that Mr. Vassanella mentioned would have nothing to do with this. So if you like this map, you like this ordinance. Go ahead. Good evening. Uh, my name is Frank Catalina. I live in Canal Walk. I live on uh, Jay's Corner. At and street uh, number? Number seven, seven Thank Jay's you. Corner. Excellent. Um, I might say that uh, I'm concerned about the change in what appears to be lot 14 on this um, diagram that we were set. And I have to say parenthetically that if something this cryptic stuff that's sent to people that gives them really little uh, opportunity unless they come here and look at all sorts of doctors to find out where the hell it is. No designations of streets or anything else on it. I don't know why that couldn't have been done. It may be a planning reason. It may be a legal reason. I think I'm it was a copy sure. of a copy of a copy. Yeah, okay. It's not a good well, excuse, but I think that's the reason. <laughs> all right. Uh, uh, here's the problem. I'm here, and I'm here with neighbors of mine also that live on uh, uh, Jay's Corner. Behind our homes, and I mean to the east, because we're on the <laughs> eastern side of Jay's Corner, um, after we get through the uh, our lot, there's a common area, and then uh, we border on exactly this lot 14 here. And it's been undeveloped and undeveloped for years, and when we bought our house here 12 years ago, we were told that nobody Sorry. could build on that land because of um, a restrictive covenants, which sounded odd to thee, but well, that's great. There's not gonna be any building back there. We don't have any density right behind us. Um, and uh, now we find that it's gonna be rezoned uh, for uh, residential 40, is it? No. The A six, it's that would in be the A zone. zone, six acre minimum lots for that lot as well. And it's under six acres, so <laughs> it would. Uh, I, I, I thought it might have been zoned agricultural, but I learned tonight that it essentially it's the twilight zone. And 
it, you know, it's the same zone as where your home is built in the development. That's that's what it was. What's currently hey, zoned as. If that's the case, um, as you've described it now, it doesn't appear they're going to be able to build any housing on that on that land. Am I wrong? Uh, the zoning right now, that property is, a, I think, just short of five acres. They have a house, and that's what's permitted. So, yeah. okay. if they that that's basically what they have, what they're permitted to have. So without some kind of additional bulk variance, exactly, nothing else could be built on it. They could do call a house unless they wanted to do a subdivision. They would need significant variances. Okay. Well, you can't guarantee there isn't going to be some application for a bulk variance at some time. But uh, I guess, uh, um, guess uh, you've answered my question. Yeah. Uh, again, let me. Let, let me state, if you like this map, you like this picture, that's what this ordinance is about, is, present, is preserving what is up there. Well, I hate to be an old fogey, but I'd prefer to stay exactly as we are. Oh, that, that's what we're trying to do. That, exactly. And if we leave the zoning the way it is, you could have 50 units on that piece of property. Okay. Anyone six, else? Six units to the acre. Anyone else wishing to speak? Okay. Come on up. And... See, but just yes. call out when the three minutes. Mike Zambri, here. Five Days Corner. It is 4.2 acres. It's for sale. If he sells it, what happens? I heard somebody in the audience, whether it's for sale is not. I'm sorry, name, really and, adre name, name and address. That's behind us, 4.2 acres. Name and address, please. Oh, he did? I'm sorry, yeah. I missed That's it. Right. So, I'm so, I'm Five Days Corner. Okay. Somerset. So if it's sold, your question is. What can it? What can he do with that property if somebody if, if buys it? What can be done with that property? Well, again, it's if it go, it's going if it's rezoned to the A zone, it would be basically locked into what it is right now, as far as from a zoning perspective. If somebody wants to do something more, they would, they would have to, they would have to, if they want to do more than that, they would have to go to the either the planning board or zoning board and get a, a bunch of different variances. But this would. Again, what this council is considering is taking it from technically what I mean, it really it's 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 you know, they're in the senior citizen village zone now, which technically permits up to six units of the acre on that property. It doesn't really apply because they don't have two hundred acres and they don't but there's really no zoning that applies to that property whatsoever. Except that so what it really does apply to is if the existing developer of Canal Walk were to purchase that property and merge it into what is now Canal Walk, they could develop it at six possible. units to the acre. Yeah, originally, he did try to buy that so, property. So the point is, and, and the fact that it's for sale is really of no consequence to the township. The zoning is to make the zoning consistent with the property that's that's there and the zoning of a, of a zone, six acre minimum lots, is consistent with what is currently developed on that property. Making the zoning consistent with what exists. Right. Really the way to summarize it. So in essence, they if they bought that property, they could put few houses in there but I don't know if there's no. enough property no if they, they if this ordinance is adopted okay the way that that property is currently developed one house on it is the way that it could be developed in the future okay. you could knock the house down and build a new house but it's zoned for one house on six acres and this more or less makes it a conforming lot in the six acre zone and that's the purpose of the ordinance amendment I appreciate that you got Thank it. you Hi, Bill Socha, 74 Gates Road in Somerset. My father-in-law, uh, who's a Korean vet, who's in uh, hospice basically right now, uh, owns these properties, 7403, 7405. And they're current, the currently uh, at half-acre lots. Um, we're having a survey done right now where you're only going to be able to put in two one-acre lots on that five and a half acres. By doing this and making them R40s, what you're basically doing is cutting out three and a half acres that will be absolutely useless to our family. Because our, the original plan was my father, when he, father when he purchased it, wanted his whole family to live together and have houses back there. So just like Mr. Vassanella said, and you, Robert, 
is this stuff was purchased many, many years ago with a grandiose plan to have the family be there. And at this point, if this recommendation goes through, basically you've taken that whole thing away from an army veteran who wanted his family together. My brother-in-law have houses there. We've subdivided and lived down there across my father-in-law. The other eight, these other half acres, the plan was originally to have the children build there and have everyone together. So again, by putting this in for no reason other than just making it our 40s, you're basically cutting out three and a half acres, which if the township does decide to do that, then you should pay us for those three and a half acres that would be totally useless to us because you're only going to be able to build two acres. And the other three and a half, which backs up to Magnolia, is really you can't even get to it. So it's really useless property, and we're paying taxes on it. I really would like you to understand that it does have a gigantic impact to our family. The fact that um, the township says, yeah, the other ones are all already set for one acre lots. The ones on this side, so they're weird shaped sized lots that will not conform and be useless to the family. And again, we've been paying taxes on them. So it's really not fair to our family to go this way. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Good evening. How you doing? I wasn't really prepared to speak or anything. I'm Ed Lubowicki, Jr. My dad was the one that um, was the Korean vet that if he was here right now, he'd probably be a little bit louder than I'll be. I'm a little more calm. Let's put it that he way. He would be. God, he would be. <laughs> God <laughs> bless him. Phone calls from us. You're probably happy we have him in the VA. I've known home your father for a long time. He <laughs> would be louder than you are right now. <laughs> He's a good man. He had a lot of um, foresight for what he was doing in 1974 when we moved to Franklin from Edison. And we love being here all these years, so we want to thank you for that so much. Um, I do want to point out, um, me personally, I have a home on lot 7405, which is just about uh, over a half acre right now. So by changing what you're doing right now, that lot already does not conform to two acre lots or the R40 zone. So it will adversely affect me personally for my home. Um, that said, the 7403, which was my dad's grand plan, and he, he has a good heart. He wanted something um, for us in the future. By changing it, it's going to completely um, affect us, um, our future. So not really sure why we're doing this right now, but it really will create a hardship for our family. We've been here for a long time. Um, also, the, the bottom of, of lot 7403 um, backs up to Magnolia, and I don't think that's even half acre lots. I think that's it's R20. Much, it's R20, right? So, so that's even smaller. So part of that lot 7403 back supper is connected to I know part is the stream but part is actually connected to Magnolia which is already the R20 so maybe I'm wrong I'm, I'm not a planner or anything of that but it definitely does it doesn't affect. front on Magnolia no it doesn't front backs up to backs up to the properties that are back yes no yes excuse me not on the street but the properties on Magnolia so I you know I, I don't know why this happened or anything but it definitely does create a hardship for our family so well, thank you very much for at least hearing us Anyone else? Yes, sir. Good evening. I'm Pankaj Shah. I'm here with my wife, Meenu. Uh, the address property that we own is uh, 75 Gates Road. Uh, here, lot 78.02. And we are both here this evening to urge you to please not change the zoning. And I'll try to explain to you briefly our rationale for this request. So we moved to Franklin Township in 1982. At that time, the 7801, 7802 was one property, 73 Gates Road. And we raised our daughters here. And in early 1990s, I had to move out because we had to move out because of my job moved up north. And everybody in the family wasn't happy particularly both my daughters who look at Franklin Township as they, they associate happy memories of their childhood with this place. So we decided at that time to, to, I couldn't afford to maintain this house and the other one. So I said, we will subdivide it, sell the house with the property that conforms to R20 
and I vowed to them that when I retire, I'll work on it to see how I could subdivide and give each one their own land in Franklin Township, the one that they cherished in, since the childhood. Uh, I decided in October of last year to retire in June, so less than three months from now, and we talked about getting a lot for them as my very first project in my retirement, which begins on July 1st. And I received this letter from Township in March, and to put it mildly, all four of us, particularly my daughters, are very unhappy if this were to happen. That's all. Thank you. So you said you live at 73 Gates Road? No, no, uh, sir. 75, you own the, the property that is 75 Gates Road. Correct. But there's seven, so, so who is Jasmine and Isaiah? They, I don't know them. They, they, they own the, the, the lot that was carved off of the, the lot that correct. you own originally way correct. back when. Okay, yeah. yeah, I just didn't, I'm looking at the map and I'm okay. trying to figure out which one is yours. Yours is an undeveloped parcel of property. Correct. And currently. this was my family project right, when I no. retired on July 1st. So. Okay. Thank Jay, you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? Yes, ma'am. You gotta come right up to the mic, please. I'm sorry. Maria? Maria? Okay. Alfonso, 150 Schoolhouse Road. So I'm over there on that. Uh, I just, I'd like to some clarification. Sure. Because. It, it, it's gonna try to leave you the same as you are. That so you're on schoolhouse, correct? And are you are you you're one of these? So similar similar to the other properties, um, right now again you're in the you're technically in the canal walk zone. So if you wanted to expand your house, so remember when I explained how when the township rezoned this whole area, they rezoned the whole block, including the ones that weren't purchased, and these properties are for the last two decades have just remained in the senior citizen village zone and if you were to try to expand your house or something you would have to go to the zoning board because you're technically you're non-conforming use it's very complicated but that's the way the law works what we want to do is return you back into a the a zone which is a single family residential zone you would now you know have a conforming lot in terms of use and um, the setbacks that would apply would be the, the requirements of that zone. That was the zone that that property was in before. We're basically returning you back to the zone that you were in before you were put in the senior citizen village zone. Kind of returning it back from which it came. What was I changed? You were changed in the, in the mid 90s from the A zone to the senior citizen village zone. Uh, apparently you know, that lot wasn't incorporated into Canal Walk but nonetheless it stayed in that quote unquote canal walk zone for the last two decades. And that doesn't really apply so, to you. It makes no sense to apply right. that zone to a single family home. So we're returning that property back to the A zone. So, the, on, the, so, so the, the only way you could ever do something to your property is go in front of the Board of Adjustment for a variance right now. Because you're in, the, because you're in that senior citizen village zone which the senior citizen village zone at, at the very least it, it requires 200 acres for the senior citizen village zoning to apply. So clearly you don't have 200 acres, you have just under six. You're, you're about 5.69 um, acres, okay. So that right now, if there's, there's really nothing that you can do to alter your property, put up a shed, put, you know, anything like that because the, the zoning, ordinances don't really apply to a property or size. It was, the entire area was rezoned. Premier Homes bought all the property that they were gonna buy. They built Canal Walk. They didn't buy your property. So now this is to return your property to what the previous zoning was, which was A zone for the entire area. It was in the A zone, uh, which is agricultural zone. It was in the A zone before Canal Walk bought all the property in the 1990s after the rezoning. So this is to return your property to the original zoning. Three minutes are up. If, if, you, if you want more houses built, 
then you don't want this ordinance to pass. If you like the way it is, if you like the property the way it is and you wanna be able to bury your property, put on a porch or something, you want us to pass this ordinance. I, I, if I can read your mind, I think I, you want us to pass this ordinance. It may sound like we're changing something, but we're actually keeping it the same. Well, that's what it, it sounds like. And right. I, I mean, we're, we're trying to make it up. so you could do something to your property right. without having to go to the Board of Adjustment right. every time you want to do something to your house. Uh, your time, and your, and to your, I think your a way to summarize it, Mr. Mayor, real quick, is the smaller lots that are all in the neighborhood of one acre, we're applying the one acre zoning to those lots, and the larger lots that are in the neighborhood of six or more, those are going to get the six acre zoning. So we're, we're, we're basically applying the, the requirements it, it, it sounds, to, to, to match the existing situation. It sounds, if you understood land use law, we're really trying to keep things the same. We're not, we're changing something to keep it the same. So but you're, say, I'm sorry, your time is up. So you're saying. No, your time is up, sorry. Anyone else wishing to speak? However, I live at 64 Ellison Road. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Here. Yeah. It's owned by Gadec Development. That's correct. Have any idea who those? I happen to know who the man who is that is Gaddock Developers. Sure, he oh. lives. I mean, I I know who he is. Oh, you do. Okay. I do. Um, how many houses build there once you? It's two point eight acres. If it's zoned R forty, if it's zoned R forty, based on which is what the proposal is in this ordinance amendment, is to change it from R twenty to R forty. With, without looking at any other lot restrictions that exist on that lot, and there are lot restrictions that exist on it, it, it in an R40, it would be two houses um, that could be built on that property. Um, there's a stream corridor in, uh, where that you can't encroach on that, you know, depending on the type of stream that is, it could be 50 feet from the stream all the way up to 300. I believe that that's probably a 50 or 100 foot stream buffer on that stream. So that limits the amount of ability to develop that lot. And in this particular case, it's in the R20. So half acre lots, it's 2.8 acres, which means it's five houses under its current zoning, barring any restrictions due to Probably less than that. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, I, it's, and that's what I'm saying. Barring, you know, just flat out based on the numbers, it's five. In all likelihood, it's three or four, just based on the, the, the limitations of the lot. Did you have more questions before he uses your time? No, that's okay. That's that was good. the question. There you go. Good. I, I Anyone else? got one right. Oh, got, got another. Got one right. Hi, uh, Beth Lewicki, I'm at 7405 um, uh, Gates Road. Um, my question is, uh, we are the lot that is um, not a full acre. If you rezone us to a full acre, we try to sell our property. How, how does that affect the value of our property? How does that affect the new, new people coming in? It, it depends what they, what they have in mind for the property. If so, they like, want they wouldn't even be able to put a shed on our property. Like we have a pool on our property. We have a fence up, like, no, that's, already, that, no. you know, no, that's, like. That's not, you that's not true. What, what, if they had any, if they wanted to move in and do nothing, it's not going to affect them at all. Right. If they wanted to put an addition on the house, there would be, the, the setback requirements for the R40 zone are larger. Mm -hmm. um, so, it could trigger the need, depending on what they have in mind, where the addition <coughs> goes, if they go straight back, it might not, if they go to the side, it might trigger the need for a variance that wouldn't come up if it was in the R20. So, as far as okay. sheds, um, well, I'm just that using nature, that as no, an I'm just, example. I'm just answering your questions. As far as sheds, things of that nature, um, they, there's enough land in the back that they would be able to put sheds. It might affect house additions. House additions, okay. Mm -hmm. So that really does affect the value of our property. Changing the zoning D from 20 depending to 40. on what the buyer may have in mind. Right, right. 
Okay, thank you. Anyone else? A motion to close the public portion. Second. Any, hearing? Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of closing public discussion, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Public discussion is closed. Mr. Vassanella, would you like to reintroduce? I, I'm going to make the motion. I'm just going to point out because it was very interesting hearing from oh, the no, 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 no. resident. Well, okay. Uh, actually. I'll well, make the motion, I, right, and then wait, discuss. Actually, actually, what we have to do is we have to make the motion on the original motion. Right. The original motion, so, not your amendment. The original motion. Do we have a motion on the original motion? <laughs> the, I mean, the original ordinance. Do we have a motion on the original ordinance? Yes, Mr. Mayor, like, we have a motion on the... Do we have a second? Second. Second. Now, Mr. Thank Bassanella, you. I see discussion. where you're going there. Yes. Right. Sorry. It's been, it's been a Mayor up and Pedantic, down. sorry. So I'm, I'm going to motion, and I just want to point out while we're having this discussion, I keep hearing about leaving things the same, making them non um, making sure people aren't left with non-conforming properties. The, so the area with the near canal walk, again, I, and I think the rest of us strongly support. I think it's the main reason that we went about this ordinance to begin with. The area on Weston, uh, the same thing. A completely different set of circumstances. What we'd be doing here, and this is the motion I'm going to make, and I just want people to be clear, my motion would do uh, what it seems the residents anywhere near Canal Walk and Western Road want. Keep that intact, the changes that are up there. The motion I'm making is to change this because what we're proposing to do here is exactly the opposite. It's, 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 we're doing here what we're telling the people we are purposely not doing in the other area. I hope I didn't confuse anybody. But the bottom line is these things were always R40. People pay taxes for decades, whether it's they were our, always our 20, Councilman, just so we're clear here. They oh, you mean they're not our 40? 40. <laughs> they're not our 40? No, you said they were always our 40. I'm talking about this. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I mixed it up. You're about to make your motion on it. Yeah, no, they, thank you. They were always our 20. Well, so, you, Mayor, have you made your motion? So, so I want to keep them our 20, so I'm motioning to simply take Second. out of the ordinance this piece here, leaving the other recommendations as they stand in the ordinance. Second it. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? On the amendment, just on the amendment. Basically, what he is amend saying is, do what we plan to do on Canal Walk. Do what we plan to do with the um, the Western Canal uh, research area, but don't change what's going here. Drop drop the ordinance part here at so the that, end of gates. So that means that the issue that it's, it's in favor of what they want. It resolves to their issue. Okay. Everyone who spoke about okay. Gates Road Any and Any other discussion Ellis. on the amendment to the ordinance? We good. We good. All for the vote. Okay, so we're now going to vote on the amendment to the ordinance. Madam Clerk, please call the vote. Roll. Councilman Chase? No. Councilwoman Francois? Yes. Councilman Gatteri? Yes. Mayor Kramer? Yes. Councilman Onijaka? Yes. Councilman Passad? Yes. Councilwoman Pruitt? Yes. Deputy Mayor Vesanella? Yes. And Councilman Wright? Okay, don't applaud yet. <laughs> so now do we have discuss we have now an amended ordinance. Do you have any discussion on the amended ordinance? I, I see no discussion on the amended ordinance. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Councilman Chase? Yes. Councilwoman Francois? Yes. Councilman Galtieri? Yes. Mayor Kramer? Yes. Councilman Onijaka? Yes. Councilman Passad? Yes. Councilwoman Pewitt? Yes. Deputy Mayor Vesanella? Yes. Councilman Wright? Yes. You may now, now applaud. Now you can applaud. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you for coming. Thank you. And thank you for your, your input. That, that really was very helpful to us. Um, we're now going to go back to item number nine. Council discussion items. Uh, action may be taken. Um, well, shouldn't we do 12B first? No, we're going to go back to nine. I understand why you would want to, but to take, to take your motion directly, we're going to do that. So, Councilman Chase, tree in memory of John Clyde, 
Those of you who are leaving, if you could leave quietly, we're, we're still conducting business. The, the Environmental Commission was approached and uh, by a lady from the University Outing Club, which is, I think, a very long established uh, club based at Rutgers, but in it's not just Rutgers people, and John Clyde was a longtime member of that. Anyway, the lady representing the club said they would like to plant a tree in the memory of John Clyde, and they'd have a little plaque on it, noting that it was planted in memory of John Clyde and probably that it was planted by the University Outing Club. My thought, and the question arose, well, where would it be planted? And I thought this was a matter really for the council to discuss, partly because they might have nine different opinions, and partly because if, if it were, for instance, to be in the grounds of the municipal complex, which I would tend to think would be logical, really that goes directly to the council, not, not through open space or uh, any other body. So I wanted to put it to the council. Uh, you have opinions as to where this tree should be planted. Do you have a suggestion? I would think somewhere on the grounds of the municipal complex, uh, since John was a longtime member of council as well as of the environmental commission. Uh, Can you be more specific I than that? Or? No, I. Okay. <laughs> I think she'd said that. One thought would be somewhere near the gazebo, and it was said, oh, well, there's other trees by the gazebo. Um, Mayor, I have a, a suggestion maybe Mr. Chase would consider. Sure. Dr. Um, I, uh, and actually, C Councilwoman Francois, you, you, you might lend some history here. John was involved uh, with the senior center, right? And helping get the senior in the community center, senior center? And, during his tenure, or no? That was so long ago. I don't. Okay, I he, don't was remember. Was he, he was on council. He was on council. In 1996. He, he, yeah, he was. Yeah. Okay. Well, I was just going to say, Councilman Chase, maybe um, an area around because you're right. The, there's so many trees around the gazebo, which is a great place to, around the veterans more. But there's so many trees, it might not stand out. Maybe there's an area by the community senior center that could stand out a little bit better and could put a plaque in, you know, it, it would really be a tribute, especially since he was involved in, in, in creating that, like Councilwoman uh, Francois. Yeah. Good. Fine by me. I, I, so uh, I always have to be the downer, right? I, I'm not quite sure that I there's any particular. I, I Well, I don't know that there's any particular area that's appropriate for the planting of another tree that's going to grow to any significant size by the senior center. Um, you know, we don't want to plant things close to sidewalks because they lift the sidewalks. We don't want to plant things close to the building because the branches fall on the building. So we tend to look for an open area to plant a tree. The, the air, so so there, are, there are some areas that might be appropriate for trees near the gazebo along the, the border between the gazebo, we'll call it the gazebo lot, and the large lot. Um, and we can certainly look there. I think that what, what what happened here, and I, and I had to step out for a minute, but what happened here is the woman who contacted, who came to the Environmental Commission meeting, also contacted the mayor and also spoke with me. And she's a member of an organization that John was a member of, and they're looking to have some commemoration of John's life in the way of a planting of a tree and a plaque. And I told her that we could certainly, through the Shade Tree Commission, plant the tree, and that now that it's spring, we would look at a location that was appropriate for it, and then we could tell them where they could put their plaque. Um, and, and I know then she came to the Environmental Commission, and that kind of got things put out of order here. Um, what, what what about right in the semicircle, right in the front of the senior center? Well, that's where the flagpole is, oh, okay. and there's yeah. the, so yep. that's just there's really not a an area of open space by the, the by the senior center. 
Um, so are you recommending that you want to try to take a look at where you think I'm, I'm recommending, recommending that you, you let the public works manager and I find an appropriate place within the municipal complex for a commemorative tree for Mr. Clyde. I'm with and I think program. that we can find one that would be appropriate. And then would you present it to council? And then I will present it to council. That sounds like a plan. So sounds do we like have a plan. motion on that? I make a motion that we allow the, the manager and the public second. director second. to make a recommendation. No, it's just if Councilman Chase, he brought it forward, so if he's I comfortable with that, then I, I'm good with that if he's comfortable. I just don't want it to be too out of the way. No, I, I think that we'll find an appropriate place where that you'll the public would be able to see it. And that was what my concern was when I just heard about the senior center is really the only place near the senior center is the land behind the senior center where it really isn't visited by the public. Um, right. So, so I, we have we have a meeting on Thursday, we'll pick a spot and we'll let you know at the next council and meeting. And I, I would, uh, this, while council isn't directing this, I might suggest you run it by Mr. Chase. Since oh, absolutely. Okay, so uh, oh. all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, motion is carried, great. Thank you, thank you Mr. Chase for bringing that up. Mr. Clyde is dear to all of us. We are now back onto the um, second readings, uh, item B, ordinance to exceed the municipal budget appropriation limits and to establish a cap bank um, on, um, and this is ordinance 4278-19, calendar year 2019, is presented for public hearing and final adoption public hearing has been noticed and is required. Do we have the motions open to the public? So moved. Seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. We are open to the public. For those watching, we have only members of the press here. Seeing no one come forward, Mayor, a motion to close the public portion of the hearing on Seconded. this ordinance. Seconded. Moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Public session is closed. So this is to um, because we're not raising uh, taxes, uh, we're not raising the, sorry, we are, yeah, we are not raising taxes, we are not increasing the uh, levy of the portion of the municipal budget that we can control. Um, we want to be able to hold in reserve the appropriations portion of the budget, which is essentially the total amount that we spend, the cap on that, we're going to hold that cap in reserve so that we can use it later just in case. That doesn't mean we're going to use it later, but it gives us options. Um, do we have a motion on the item? So moved. Seconded. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on the item? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Councilman Chase? Yes. Councilwoman Francois? Yes. Councilman Gattieri? Yes. Mayor Kramer? Yes. Councilman Onijaka? Yes. Councilman Passad? Yes. Councilwoman Pewitt? Yes. Deputy Mayor Vassanella? Yes. And Councilman Wright? Yes. We're now on to the consent agenda. Items A through M is listed on the consent agenda portion of this meeting or presents the Township Council for adoption. Do we have a motion on the consent agenda? So moved. So seconded. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Uh, Councilman Wright wanted to pull one item or discuss one item. What was that item? That right, item was I Street's policy. Yes, did you want mm. to discuss that, Mr. Uh, Chase? A, a complete streets policy essentially says that anytime you're rebuilding, you're building a new street, rebuilding a street, <laughs> even repaving a street, you should consider what you can do for users other than motor vehicles, bicyclists, pedestrians, uh, even in some cases, handicapped persons. Uh, a number of, of towns in Somerset County, uh, Somerset County itself and the state of New Jersey have such policies. This does not force us to spend any money any more than we might otherwise be doing, but it tells us, think about it. Let the director of public works consider what we can do, particularly what we can do cheaply, uh, that furthers this, this policy that makes 
uh, the street more useful uh, to everyone. Uh, an example of this, something that we just did, Church Street in Kingston, uh, which is a rather obscure little one-way street, but it is a through street, was repaved, and a bicycle lane was delimited just by a white paint on the street, uh, to provide a bicycle lane for bicyclists. What it actually does, it provides a place for people walking to the post office. Kingston has post office boxes, and so people from out Laurel Avenue have to walk to the post office, and this gives them a safer way to walk to the post office because there's a delimited bicycle lane there, at least, without our building a sidewalk. And it's some. I mean, I brought this up as leader of the township uh, green team in charge of, of making sure that we get our certification at the silver level from Sustainable Jersey. And this is, I think, a 20-point action. It is something we definitely ought to have. And as I say, a number of other townships in, I think, probably the majority of townships in Somerset County have such a policy. Somerset County itself has such a policy. The fact that you don't necessarily have to do anything may be seen in the fact that they certainly haven't applied it to South Middlebush Road. <laughs> uh, if we uh, go back to what Mr. Guy was saying, uh, one thing we have been beating on Somerset County about is, is to have uh, turn lanes to, for left turns into Jake's Lane and Cordelieu Lane to facilitate the through traffic. Uh, and they're at least running a counter there, which may mean they're beginning to take this seriously. But uh, I wish we had bicycle lanes the length of South Middlebush Road, but we will try to do what we can within our budget in Franklin Township through this policy. And it's been run by the manager and the director of public works, and they had no problem with it. Thank you, Dr. Chase, for answering that question for me. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. If you would just read 19170, just read it. Go ahead, Mr. Wright. No, I want you to read it. You're the mayor. And I would like you to read it. Go ahead. Nah. Resolution 19170, <laughs> authorized issuance of a special event permit, U.S. Soccer Club, Youth Soccer Tournament, Regional Championship, National Cup 18, Mid-Atlantic Regional Soccer, Saturday, June 29th, 2019, through Tuesday, July 2nd, 2019, PD, PDA Soccer Complex and Morningside Farm, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. I wanted that red just because youth, once again, playing soccer, everyone should come out. You know, you may not know who the teams are, but go for it. Any, anyone Could, else? Could I just ask exactly where is this soccer complex? Pillar of Fire. <coughs> pillar of is Fire, Weston Canal pillar, Road. It is the Pillar of pillar Fire. Of I, I figured PDA is Pillar of Fire. Morningside Farm is Manville Causeway. I thought that's, I was going to get away with that. That's what I figured, but I needed <laughs> confirmation. Anyone else? Well, Mr. Wright, you were so close, but you missed, because it's item G that is fun to read. And it is amend the contract for recreation and enrichment programs at various vendors, Young Genius Corporation, the Center for Special oh, Needs, Ace Ventures, and Mad Scientists, Mad Science of West New Jersey. <laughs> that was the one to read, but you did well. Why okay. are we having Mad Science of West New Jersey when we're, we're, we are in East Jersey? Where else would you want a Mad Scientist? No, it's just the company, correct, Mayor? In West Mayor? Jersey. <laughs> it, it is a company. It's, it's really just geniuses, I guess. It's, <laughs> Councilman, it's, it's just it's, it's just also the Ace Ventures, like Ace Ventura. Ventura right. I love it. It's just the company. Anyway, 
with no one else, <laughs> well put, Mr. Manager, with no one else wishing to speak, um, Madam Clerk, please call us the roll. Councilman Chase? Yes. Councilwoman Francois? Yes. Councilman Galtieri? Yes. Mayor Kramer? Yep. Councilman Onijaka? Yes. Councilman Passad? Here. Councilwoman Pewitt? Yes. Deputy Mayor Vassanella? Yes. Councilman Wright? Yeah. Um, do we have any uh, boards, committees, commissions? Um, nominations? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. You do? Yes. I'd like to nominate Kelly Probst of 2 Union Street in Kingston for the Kingston Village Advisory Committee, where we have an opening because Frank DiGiovanni, who no longer has his business in Kingston and is going to be moving out of Kingston, he was not asked to be not reappointed this year, so we have an opening on our side. Good. Any other, anyone? Any, would anyone like to nominate anyone else for that position? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Congratulations. Anyone else wish to nominate anyone else? Hearing none, we are on to the executive session. The following resolution is presented to Township Council for adoption. Uh, resolution 19-171, authorized executive session, personnel matter, attorney client privilege. Um, do I have a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? We have a motion and a second. Uh, seeing no discussion, all in favor of going into executive session, say aye. 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 I'm sorry, we have to call roll, yes, Madam Clerk. Roll. Councilman Chase? Yes. Councilwoman Francois? Yes. Councilman Gautieri? Yes. Mayor Kramer? Yes. Councilman Onijaka? Yes. Councilman Passad? Yes. Councilwoman Pirit? Yes. Deputy Mayor Vassanella? Yes. Councilman Wright? Yes. Okay, at this time the Township Council will adjourn to the executive session to discuss uh, the personnel matter uh, on attorney-client privilege. No other actions will be taken by the Township Council uh, at the conclusion of this ex executive session. Therefore, the recording will stop. Uh, and that concludes our meeting. Be well, Franklin. <laughs>